So good to see everybody. Happier with us. Michael Regai with Jim Palmer. Uh, we appreciate your diligence in waiting out uh, the what will be better than our rain delay here at the yard. But we're about set for baseball. And yet we know the Orioles bats. Uh, they've been anything but productive on this homestand. Orioles have now dropped five in a row. And yet, indeed, they've run into some quality big league pitching on this Oakland A staff. First Mark Mulder and then Tim Hudson. Jim, tonight is Barry Zito. And the last time the Orioles saw Zito in June, they were able to jump on this young left left-hander and uh, put an offense together that hung an L on Zito in the A's. Which certainly did. Uh, Josh Tower pitching that game. Uh, beautiful Saturday afternoon and Zito, uh, you know, last year 7-4 and four with an ERA under three runs a game, but Jeff Conine had a great series. The Orioles winning two out of three when they went out to Oakland. So they get nine hits, five runs. Everybody gets in the party. Brady Anderson gets a hanging curveball down the right field line. So they jump on him. Josh Tower pitches seven innings of shutout baseball. Uh, and again, great, great day offensively. David Segui was not in the lineup tonight. Neither would be Brady Anderson. So the Orioles doing a number on Barry Zito, but things have changed. You can see uh, not pitching very well. Again, only his second year in the major leagues. Seven and two in his, uh, what, last 15 starts in the month of August. A great ERA is four and one. So the Orioles are going to see a different pitcher. And again, as you mentioned, the, the Oakland A's, what, 33 and 13 since the All-Star break, which is the best record in baseball. You walk the Orioles club house and you ask is there frustration over the way the uh, the bats have been in the deep freeze of course there is now Mike Hargrove is a 290 career big league hitter in the major leagues he's had to ride through this rough time with the Orioles but he's also been well aware they've faced some quality starting pitching the thing of it is when we're when we're when we're swinging the bats the way we're swinging and we're not scoring you know the runs that we should score um, it, it makes it very difficult on a pitcher they've got to be even better and, uh, you know, and, and our guys have gone out and our pitchers have gone out for the most part night in and night out and given us a chance to win. We just need to score runs for them so we can go ahead and you know, win. Jim, as we said, Mike Hargrove, a quality big league hitter. You can attest to that. You've mm -hmm. faced him oh, many yeah. a time. So he knows how frustrating this is when all the bats go silent at once. Well, it certainly is. And, of course, uh, I think the, one of the keys is David Segui with the injured knee. So he's been in the lineup. And, you know, you talk to a lot of the scouts. And uh, Orioles are a very inexperienced lineup with a couple of exceptions. Jeff Conan having a marvelous year. But the scouts marvel at the fact that there's a very young ball club. They are, they are facing good pitching that we've talked about, Toronto and Oakland pitching very well but they're not very selective getting themselves out early in the count and good hitters they'll work the count and the Orioles how do you do that you need experience or you need veterans in the lineup and because of injuries uh, we're not seeing the normal lineup that you would normally see uh, in an Oriole uniform. We'll see if the Orioles are able to uh, employ that team hitting concept tonight try to get the bats out of deep freeze and get on Barry Zito. Zito quality young left hander in the Oakland Athletics starting rotation getting set to go as is Jason Johnson. Jason trying to become an 11 game winner tonight as uh, the Orioles are trying to salvage the finale of this three game series after dropping the first two uh, against uh, the very hot Oakland A's. Uh, Jim Palmer, what about our Jim Coleman Honda keys to the game? How do you assess uh, the finale of this series? Well, we talked about the A's. They're in a good stretch. They're playing well in August. Make hay while the sun shines. I guess it's a little bit of a misnomer when it's we had a rain delay, but. And uh, O's for zero, Zito, or you can actually make it does Z's or zeros for Zito because he's four and one with a one point ERA over his last six starts, pitching very well. And for the Orioles, stop the bleeding, apply the tourniquet as they've lost five, uh, five uh, straight losses, seven out of eight, and take the fifth, Jason Johnson. He's the fifth uh, best in the American League as far as earned run average. He's lost his last three starts, but not a lot of run support defensively in one of those games. Three errors, six unearned runs in the first against the Red Sox. And about three weeks ago on a Sunday. So still pitching well, and it's a matter of really just how good the windup is because this stuff has been pretty consistent all year long. Here's Jason Johnson up to the task tonight of trying to cool down the Oakland A's. The skies have cleared, the rain has stopped, the Orioles getting ready to go against Art Howe's Ball Club. Don't go away. You're on go as well. Next, right here out of the yard. We're on some kind of a roll. Season tying high, 21 games over the 500 mark as we take a look at Art Howe's next. Still athletic city lineup. Same lineup he's used the last couple of nights, staying very consistent. Johnny Damon leading off played center field. The DH Mini G, Jeremy Giambi. Jason Giambi, who has homered in this series, homered a couple of times against the O's this year at first base and hitting third. The cleanup man uh, that has made this lineup whole is Jermaine Dyes. You see, he's on a RBI per game pace. 
with the Oakland A's. Die in right field, hitting fourth. Eric Chavez had a big night last night. at third base. He's hitting fifth. The shortstop, Miguel Tejada. Be Terrence Long in left field. Doing the catching, hitting number eight is Ramon Hernandez. And hitting ninth, playing second base is Frank Menachino. And Jim, how about uh, a swing around Mike Hargrove's Orioles defense? Well, take a look. Uh, Luis Matos back in an Oriole uniform. He's been playing center field. He'll play a left because of more being used to playing center. Richard in right. Uh, Cal at third. Uh, Brian Roberts has been DH DHing when he's been playing, but he'll be a shortstop tonight. Jerry Harrison at second. Jeff Conine because of the injury to David Segui. Still down at first and behind the plate with uh, Brooke Fordyce and a little bit of an offensive uh, struggle. Only. Uh, Two for his last 20. He'll be catching Jason Johnson. As we mentioned, lost three in a row, and uh, not that he pitched that poorly, but uh, not as good as he did early on. But what a difference! Uh, you know, last year one and ten. This year ten and nine. Never won a start last year. 0 and eight with a 7.20 ERA, and here he is. As we almost get into September, fifth best earned run average. He has really turned his career around. That he has. Let's take a look at our force three umpire in quartet. That's Bill Welke uh, behind the man. Still call the balls and strikes. Brian Onora, John Hirschbeck, Chuck Merriweather go first to third around the bases. You've been very diligent, but let's play Orioles baseball, shall we? The Oakland A's and the Birds do wrap up this three game series as Jason Johnson will miss down in the way with his fastball to Johnny Damon. Damon has uh, been one of the igniters. For this Oakland ball club in their takeoff as that slash foul moving from left field back to center field with the acquisition of Jermaine Dye and Terrence Long moving over to left. And Jim, we saw a multi hit game from Johnny Damon in here in the opener on Tuesday night. He had a, a base hit in five turns last night and a couple of steals when he gets on. So he sets the table for him. And what you like to have to have happen if you're Art Howe, the manager of Oakland, is that basically Damon will get on. Uh, Jeremy Giambi inexperienced uh, as a major league level but a better fastball hitter if, if Damon gets on you have to respect the running game he's going to get more fastballs to hit two one pitch on the ground for Jerry Harrison picked up half and throw out Johnny Damon a good start for Jason Johnson taking away the uh, the table center Johnny Damon so we get started about an hour and 20 minutes uh, Post the scheduled start time tonight, but uh, now with the skies clearing, we fingers crossed might have a clear mm -hmm. sailing the rest of the way here at the yard. That's what Jason Johnson hopes uh, did not pitch out in Oakland, so this will be his first start. You know, last year, 0 2 against Oakland, but once again, uh, 1 and 10 pitcher last year, 10 and 9 this year with a very, very low earned run average. Now here's Jeremy Giambi, left handed hitting DH. If you haven't been with uh, us the last couple of nights uh, we've spoken of uh, Jeremy was in a right field platoon with Adam Pyatt as the season began and so the reconfiguration of the Oakland outfield and it's uh, done a lot of good in a lot of different ways Jim but Art Howe has managed to find a way to keep Jeremy Giambi's bat in the lineup he handles most of the DH duties duties with maybe the exception of giving brother Jason a day off at first base occasionally and as uh, you were talking on uh, Tuesday after a little bit of a uh, there's Jason Giambi last year's uh, most valuable player but he stretched his left hamstring so Jeremy played first base and after that third game he said boy I got exposed and more comfortable with a bat in his hand than a glove on his left hand. Uh, Johnson's one one pitch will find the outside in. Well, Jim you talked about uh, Jason losing uh, his third straight start as uh, as he was a victim of uh, the Oriole bats being shut out by the Toronto Blue Jays. This is fouled out of play. And last start here at the yard on Friday night as a homestand began. Well, yeah, as a, as a whole, doesn't get a whole lot of runs on the year. 4.6 runs a game. And you know, Roger Clemens, uh, you know, having a fabulous year, but he's getting over seven runs a game. So obviously, if the Orioles not with the kind of offense they have in New York and some other cities. Jason trying to find his release point. The arm was dropped a little bit to Damon, but he was able to come back and get the, uh, the strikeout. It's really important that he throws downhill. And to be able to do that, he's got to be tall. He's already 6'6, but stand tall on the rubber and fall. Throw in a downward plane. Gets on top of his breaking ball. Can stay and keep the fastball in the strike zone. 2 2 to Jeremy Giambi. Blew a heater right by him. First K of the night for Jason Johnson. 
Well, Jim, I know you like that. You talk about uh, pitching off the fastball, and Jason Johnson not afraid of contact as he goes right after hitters. Well, it's his best pitch. Uh, you know, they throw about 94 to 95. That one right there, a two seamer away, right on the outside corner as we look at our Southwest Airlines plane view. So the 2 2 pitch, and, and the one thing that he's been able to do this year, and it started really last to fall when he went out to uh, and worked with an ophthalmologist out. Out in San Diego, Sid Thrift, general manager of the Orioles, saying, "Listen, let's work on our focus." Mark Wiley's done a marvelous job uh, refining his windup, and he's just been much more consistent. Jason Giambi checking that swing, and Chuck Merriweather says that, "Yeah, he did so successfully." And the main man in the Oakland attack, very congenial, very uh, outspoken at times, but very well spoken. Leader of this ball club, Jason Giambi. And it's not just about power numbers either. We've spoken of the, the better than 100 walks for three straight years. And Jim, that's why he leads the league in on base percentage. Well, he does that. And it doesn't matter if you, you know, you could flip it up there over your back, around your back, and still hit I mean, if you're left handed, it was last night, he was hitting about 333 against lefties with 10 home runs. You just don't find too many guys. And we've talked about it last night. Bonds, people like that, Griffey. There's your on base percentage because uh, again remember what that is with that Bosley the hitting instructor said what's his greatest attribute well he's got a lot of them but one of them is he'll take the walk mm -hmm. and with Jermaine Dye behind him makes it a lot easier to do that. Now the one two to Jason Giambi and this that outside edge. Very big and uh, vocal crowd here at the yard tonight. Last couple of nights. Well, the fans have been great, Mike. Hey, I mean, this ball club not playing well, but they have been very supportive. And once again, Jason right now is not in a great groove. You know, breaking balls, arms down, and of course, what he's been able to do has been able to adjust, and that's what pitching is all about. We saw Mark Mulder as he won his 16th game. The Orioles roughed him up for two runs in the first inning, and all of a sudden, he had made the adjustment. Ended up winning a 16th game. Hudson struggled last night, but when he needed to make a big pitch, he was able to make it. Payoff pitch from Jason Johnson to Jason Giambi. Boyke ball is lifted up the line and left. He's going to get in the seats. Well, he tried to finish Jason Giambi off with that breaky pitch. And the other Jason in this uh, this battle of pitcher and hitter, Jason Johnson, look at the earned run averages. At their home ballparks, and you see where Jason Johnson uh, sits at top of the class in the American League. Well, oh, he's also seven and three. I mean, seven and three uh, at home, and only three and six on the road. Challenging Jason Giambi with a fastball. It wasn't quite on it, but I think Lunar is saying, "Do we really want to mess around on the inside part of the plate?" Fernando may be paying attention the other night when Sidney Ponso, uh, after starting out Jason uh, Giambi with a curveball, tried to get a fastball in. It ran back over the plate and hit his 32nd home run, a, a two run shot. At that time, a game four to two, and it made it six to two in a hurry. And saw Sidney Ponso a moment ago, going to miss a start, maybe a couple of starts, could possibly uh, be down, shut down for the rest of this 2001 season. We'll see how that unfolds. Another 3 2 pitch that stayed high. Two out walk for Jason Giambi here in the opening inning. So, adding to that on base percentage as the walk count continues to mount for one of the best hitters in the game. You know, we talk so often, Mike, about what a lot of offenses like to do. I mean, this offense over the last couple of years has been about on base percentage, hitting home runs, not worried about the average that much. Well, the one thing that Jason Giambi can do is he's going to work the count. He is going to get the pitch count up. And a lot of the hitters for Oakland can do that. But he's not going to run. He is not going to steal a base. And, and basically, if you don't make your pitch, he's that good a hitter, you might be better off facing die. Not that he's any kind of easy touch, because that's certainly the case. As you mentioned, what, 34 RBIs in mm -hmm. 33 games? Yeah. And no coincidence that uh, what is it, 31 games that uh, he started for this ball club. Uh, they have won two thirds of them. So you know, Damon moving to center field, acquiring die long over to left. It's uh, it's kind of been like a, a situation that has triggered this open ball club. And, uh, 
recent rise as we talked about it. They went into wild card lead on August the 9th. But Jim at one time now you know after the all star break this ball club was eight games back in the wild card chase and now five games up so that's a plus 13 over the course of about five and a half weeks. There's your runs batted in. I mean guys having a great month but when you consider that uh, Jeff Conine playing on a much lesser offense also a marvelous month for Jeff. Uh, David Segui in and out of the lineup even though Cal's been at least early on in August was very hot not hot lately only six for his last 41 Segui not playing all the time. So when they do pitch to Jeff Conine he has certainly taken advantage of it. That he has. Talk about the Orioles fight but where would they be. Without the work of Jeff Conine this year. Really don't even want to think about it. And you said this uh, enthusiastic crowd, very vocal here from the onset. The one two to die. Checked it as Johnson tried to finish him off with a slider. Well, Mike, you were talking about it last night the fact that uh, Jermaine Dye uh, traded from Atlanta to Kansas City and then eventually coming over uh, to the Oakland A's. But when he came from Atlanta to Kansas City, he probably would have swung at that pitch. Mm -hmm. uh, big, long swing. Didn't get a chance to play on a regular basis in Atlanta. But that swing got a little bit shorter. A big guy. About 6'5, maybe even a little bit taller. Spoiled the fastball from Jason Johnson, a little bit tardy on it. Jim, you mentioned the Atlanta days. Going back to the Atlanta days, I, I've got to be honest with you. I and talking to the Atlanta folks back when he was a young player there, they weren't sure about him. Bobby Cox wasn't sure about whether this would, it would all come together, the lights would go on, and whether it would translate into him being a, a, a bona fide big leaguer, but it has. Well, he's all, also, he's only 27 now. So you're mad, you know, you we're talking about a kid that's 21, 22. Right, yeah. Playing on a team that's. Always in the uh, division or postseason. You see, right now that's the 24th pitch of the inning. So while Jason is, is finding his rhythm, his arm slot, this is what's happened. It's a very hot, humid night. And what Oakland would like to do is, uh, and everybody talks about it, is run the pitch count up. And so even if Jason's pitching well, Come around the sixth inning, that pitch count will be 100, 110 on a hot, humid night. And all of a sudden, that can take its toll. Now, Jason Johnson ready to deal another 2 2 to die. He laid off the breaking ball. Point well taken that you made a moment ago. That's probably two that he might have chased back uh, as an Atlanta Brave in 97. Well, also take what's your approach? Where are you trying to hit the ball with two strikes? A young hitter sometimes doesn't cut his swing down. Uh, but uh, Jermaine Dye, I mean, he's got good power to right center, so he can wait a little bit longer. And if you wait a little bit longer, it gives you a little bit more time to identify the pitch. Jason Giambi going 3 2 to Dye that missed downstairs. Well, Jermaine Dye battled back from being down 1 2 in the count. That'll put a couple aboard the back to back walks to Jason Giambi and Jermaine Dye to set things up for Eric Chavez. And uh, it's also going to get a visit early from Mark Wiley to Jason Johnson. Well, I think Mark, uh, he knows him as well as anybody, along with Mike Flanagan, uh, both of them working in spring. And then, of course, uh, Mark, the, the regular pitching coach over the course of the year. But I think right now, I mean, this this is about slowing everything down, getting your arm just a little bit higher. And what's happening, he's, he's such a hurry to throw the ball, Mike. What's happening, he's down the rubber, down the hill, and his arm's back. Can't get it up, can't get on top of his pitches. And then when we start talking about Eric Chavez last night, home run, number 20 on the year, also a double, hit a change up for a home run and a curveball. So, okay, let's slow everything down. Let's get back into our rhythm. Let's make our pitches. I mean, uh, Chavez is an awfully good hitter, but. He's got certain strengths and he's got certain weaknesses. Let's go after him. It's not about stuff. It's about location and making your pitches. And you only need one more out and you're out of the inning. Well, Jason Johnson trying to put away this uh, very strong 23 year old left handed hitter. He unloaded home run number 20 last night. 410 foot shot to dead center field here at the yard. Off of Josh Towers hitting with a couple aboard and two down here in the opening inning. Jason Johnson all started for him of course with the Pittsburgh Pirates and went to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays in that uh, expansion draft and Jim came over here and uh, was an eight game winner for the Orioles after uh, birds acquired him in that Danny Clyburn deal and a very good trade for the Orioles and one is last five there's a changeup. they got knuckleball down on the uh, 
Didn't know he threw a knuckleball. Yeah, there we go. Change up. See, but the change up right now at 87, and, and that tells me, again, we talk about separation. If your fastball is 93, that, that, that change up, you throw it a good spot might be all right, but in the middle of the plate, of course, this is what Chavez hit last night. So, again, you have to slow everything down. He just seems like he's a little bit wired to this point. And there's your good fastball. Got a little bit in on the hands of uh, Eric Chavez. 96. Jason Johnson now ahead in the count. So he moves away and he throws it in, but he's got so much velocity and uh, really got the arm out in front. Chavez is a pretty good fastball hitter, couldn't even get to it. Now Jason Johnson's 1 2 to Eric Chavez. This downstairs, that'll level the count at 2 2. And Jason Johnson, uh, we talked about Josh Towers last night caring and wanting to become the uh, the best major league starting pitcher that he can be. Jason Johnson has been watching very intently the last couple of nights. Hasn't had a lot of success in his early big league career against this Oakland ball club. A couple of losses. 2 2 pitch is lifted out of play by Chavez. Well, if you're a manager as Mike Hargrove is, or uh, an owner like Peter Angelos, pitching coach like Mark Wiley, you are getting everything that Jason Johnson has to, to offer. You can see him between starts doing, even not when he's not throwing his onside, he's out in the outfield working on his windup. He's in the hallways working on his windup. Mm -hmm. So very diligent to, uh, to and attention to detail. You know, as you mentioned, carries very deeply. But tonight, just not being able to stay back long enough to be able to get the arm out in front and get on top of his pitches. Everybody will be moving as Johnson comes to the plate next to Eric Chavez. He's gone to the full count on his third consecutive hitter is the pitch count. 32. Wow. Here in the opening inning. Yeah, 32. And Giambi and die to move the payoff pitch. This is scalded to deep right center. More on the track, and that ball is out of here. Eric Chavez put a charge into that 3 2 fastball and jolted it out of here. Number 21 on the year for Chavez. Got in a fastball situation, Jim, without being able to uh, command the breaking ball early, and Chavez lost it on Jason Johnson. Well, he certainly did. And what we talk about on base percentage, back to back walks uh, with two outs, Giambi and Die, and then the three. What, look where the target is, and look where Lunar is. He missed by about a foot. Chavez, uh, he does it all the time against the Orioles. The seven lifetime home runs. And the guy can go a yard in a hurry out over the plate. What a formula. Good pitching. Three run home run uh, on occasion. Uh, they hit uh, on Tuesday night. They hit a couple of two run home runs. Last night another two run home run. So the long ball uh, an integral part of Oakland's attack here in this series. Miguel Tejada taking the breaking ball that missed up high to even the count at 1 1. Now, last night I mentioned it a moment ago. Uh, Chavez went dead center on Josh Towers with a 400 foot plus bomb. Well, he's had 10 home runs in his last 41 games. So he's on fire. And the A's have now out homer. The Orioles 5 nothing in this series. As Tejada fouls it back. And, and just imagine, again, we, we talked about how the three pitchers we've seen are all high draft choices. They've all made it in the big leagues in about three years. Tejada, they have an academy down in the Dominican Republic. That's how they signed him. Chavez, number one draft choice, 1996. Mm -hmm. Giambi, second round, 1992. So they have done an extra job. Mark Mulder, who won a 16th, he was their number one draft choice. Gave him over $3 million. Two years to get to the big leagues back in 98. Pitching in the big leagues in the year 2000. They've been very astute, especially with their pitchers, because they're going after college pitchers. And it makes a lot of sense to me because you get a little bit better read on a college pitcher. You get more experience. You get the uh, chance to see how durable they're going to be because you pitch a lot of innings at the college level. And you usually get somebody who's a little bit more mature. Mm -hmm. Matriculation period uh, a little yeah. bit quicker. They get to the big leagues. Now the 2 2 to Tejada. We got jammed. This is Flair to right. Gonna drop. Jerry Harrison can't get there. Base hit Miguel Tejada. And a bad pitch from Jason Johnson. He got in. 
And the trademark, Sitahata, he's saying, yeah, he felt that as he fought it off over the head of Harrison for the two out base hit. Well, we showed you the great plays he made last night. He was 0 for 8 in this series, 0 for 4 the last couple of nights. A walk the first night. Jerry Harrison can't get to it. So on the board, 1 for 9. Mm -hmm. Rub his thumbs a little bit. Well, that's the kind of hits you like to get if you're uh, to hate it. And yeah, right, he's looking at a 40 pitch inning. And what's even worse is the three runs they put on the board. It's Terrence Long as this misses down and in. Long, the, uh, the seventh hitter, uh, stepped to the plate for the A's tonight. Remember now, this all started after Jason Johnson got Johnny Damon on the ground out and Jeremy Giambi to fan. Pair of three two pitches that missed to Jason Giambi and Jermaine Dye. It's followed by the three run home run shot from Eric Chavez. And 2 0 oh on Terrence Long. Well, he's working on a seven game hitting streak. And once again, how did they get Terrence Long? Two years ago, they had a, an aging left hander, big salary. Mets needed a starter. They mm -hmm. catered, traded uh, Kenny Rogers. Uh, Terrence at 23. And last year, 18 home runs. He hits 288, drives in 80 runs. Doesn't steal a lot of bases, but very high success rate. Well, has a chance to be a quality player, though. Jim Hardy Clark. is. Art Howe, they really like him. And you know, Art Howe is, uh, we talked about set lineups, third night in a row. He's run out the same lineup. But you know, Miguel Tejada playing in his 242nd consecutive game. Terrence Long in his 209th consecutive game. So uh, with the uh, the Iron Man of uh, great proportion down at third base. And Cal Ripken, the A's show up with uh, guys that like to have their name written on the lineup card by Art Howe, and they go out there every day as well. It's going to get out of play. Two and two now on Long. Just not being able to spot that breaking ball, Jimmy. You he tried to do it to Jason Giambi. He tried twice with Jermaine Dye. Walked both of them before the, uh, the count ran to 3 2 on Chavez. And John Bale, who has uh, played the role of Longman, along with John Wasden. Uh, he's up and throwing. Now the 2 2 pitch. Tahana's going on the ground to the right of Brian Roberts. The back in and throw out Terrence Long. That's nice play by Roberts, who's going to cover the bag. Had to throw on the brakes and go back to his right. Eric Chavez, three-run home run in the opening inning. Only a second-year player came up at uh, the end of last year, went seven and four with a 2.88 ERA. And if you're with us early, I don't know if that was our opening or our pre-opening or whatever. He struggled <laughs> three and six, but seven and two, and he has just been marvelous. I mean the amazing thing Mike if you look at his numbers four and one his last six starts giving up one run a game and only twenty one hits in forty four and two thirds innings thirteen walks almost a strikeout an inning only two home runs so he has really been on a roll Brian Roberts leading things off for the birds is that one one breaking ball missed high so Roberts getting a start at shortstop tonight haven't seen Brian in that capacity much. Uh, after that uh, that long run early replacing Mike Bordick as Zito works the outside corner. And the amazing thing about Zito you talked to all the scouts they said what they all like about him is he's been able to the, the angle the arm angle Greg Myers former Royal now with the. With Oakland. I said who does he remind you of and he said well. Maybe David Wells. A little bit of Frank Viola. Because Frankie V uh, you know he was very tall and you can see right here. So he is a, I mean he has just been on one of those rolls. He's got a big biting curveball. He's got a good change up when it's on. He'll pitch in. There's that curveball. See ya. It's just it's a 12 to 6. Overhand pitcher. It starts up, you give up on it, and it just swoops down in the strike zone. The average is about uh, almost nine K's per nine in each pitch. 8.7, and there's his first of the night. Southwest Airlines a, a plain view and the amazing thing again the downward plane when he is that that curveball going and the high strike the pitch they're calling this year they didn't call last year certainly not going to hurt that curveball because you're going to give up on it it's just going to come in and get the upper realm of the strike zone and very tough for the Oriole hitters Jerry Hairston looking at the cold strike on the outside corner so Hairston back in the number two hole for Mike Argo six times this year that Hairston 
will hit out of the, the spot in the lineup. Zito will miss that outside edge. Well, maybe not a bad place for Jerry Harrison to hit because uh, you know, everybody you talk to uh, when it comes to coaching staff and whatever is it just Jerry should use the middle of the field. And you know, a lot of times, if you watch him, he's going to hit his best shots foul. So maybe trying to pull too much, second place hitter, and especially if your leadoff guy gets on, you, you need to hit the ball to right field. And his best months you go back to June when he hit over 300, he uses the whole field. When he gets in the pull mode, he can't cover the plate and is susceptible to the breaking ball. Three and one on Hairston and about 50 points higher against left handed pitching. Jerry Hairston is than against right handers this year. And the reason for that is because the breaking ball comes into you. Mm -hmm. Zito is 3 1. And miss high on the five pitch walk to Jerry Hairston. And the Orioles have their first base runner of the night. Make sure now you turn to BWI Spotlight. You get the real lowdown, the X's and O's from head coach Brian Billick of the defending Super Bowl champion Baltimore Ravens. It's the day after every Ravens game throughout the regular season. And the analysis comes uh, from the main man on the sidelines, and you'll get it from Brian Billick himself on BWI Spotlight weeknight, 6 p.m., only on one place. Comcast Sportsnet. Melvin Mora. In the number three hole tonight for Mike Hargrove and looking at a called strike. Well, Melvin at 249 on the year. Mora, after playing shortstop first couple of games in this series, back at center field. Well, Melvin now making his 80th start as a center fielder. He started 34 times as a shortstop. Well, Mora uh, proving his value to the ball club. The 0 1 has popped up. In foul territory, Chavez coming down the line toward the plate. Put the squeeze on it. Moore is hot number two here in the first. And Jim Barry Zito, a young man from uh, University of California, Santa Barbara. But interesting thing about him, he starts at a four year school as a freshman and then decides to go to a junior college, so he'd be eligible for that uh, major league draft of amateur talent after his sophomore season. And decided to kick it up a year. He's, you go to a four year school, you got to wait till you're uh, 21 years of age or your, your class graduates, uh -huh. one or the other. Well, he made the right decision. Yeah, first rounder, uh, got a bunch of money. First pitch swing at Jeff Conine. Ground ball in front of the bag. Frank Menachino will glove it and throw out Conine. A nice play by Menachino. Had to charge to his right. Barry Zito and Oakland have a 3 0 lead after one. About an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, Delaying the festivities here tonight at the yard, but Oakland got a three run home run shot from Eric Chavez with two down in the opening inning to grab this early lead. Speaking of home runs in this series, Ramon Hernandez has gone deep twice, two run home run in each of the first two games against Orioles pitching. Pretty impressive the way he did it. Uh, you know, he had a double the first time up on Tuesday night to right center, and then homered off the foul pole down the right field line, and last night. In a uh, two nothing ball game Josh Towers got behind him and uh, he jumped all over a 2 0 pitch and hit it down the left field line so he's pretty much used the uh, the whole field. You know, Josh didn't pitch that poorly not a lot of run support. Now the one one to Ramon Hernandez that breaking ball and miss away. You know, it's interesting about young pitchers. You know, you talk to Josh, and, and a lot of times you always, we always have that, I guess, that adage: you learn from your mistakes. But I really believe that he does. I mean, he is uh, able to apply what is already transpired and try to stay away from that situation again. And a lot of uh, young pitchers either don't pay attention, they don't, uh, you know, they're not very attentive, or whatever. But. It's going to be interesting to really follow the career of Josh Towers because I think, as we mentioned last night, he's going to get bigger, stronger. He's going to work out. We talked today about just making better pitches. He can he can throw strikes and blindfold. That's how good a control he has. But all you have to do is watch Greg Maddox pitch, and then you realize it's not just about throwing strikes; it's about throwing quality strikes. So last night, nine base hits through seven innings, a couple of home runs when he got behind. And, but yet, on occasion, he made some great pitches. So you just have to be a little bit consistent, and that's what experience and at this level, that's what you need to do. Two-two pitch got jammed way toward third, ripped it up there, and it's 
Well, you got to feel like, uh, you know, Ramon doesn't run that well anyway, but when you get jammed like that, you feel like a tortoise. Because you are, you, I mean, it probably just kind of sh shocks you. Big swing, ball doesn't go anywhere. Jason can't get to it. King Cal right now, he knows he's got plenty of time. So a nice pitch by Jason Johnson. Nice play by Cal. One out here in the second. They're all over his fist. Mm hmm. It's Frank Menachino, right handed hitting second baseman. Kino has struggled a little bit here in the uh, month of August. Did uh, break a dry spell with a two base hit last night. And what he's been doing, according to Thad Bosley, is he, even though the base hits haven't been coming, Jim, he's still been pretty selective at the plate. He's been able to uh, draw walks to serve as that, uh, that somewhat of a second leadoff man down at the bottom of the order. On base percentage. Yeah. And that's what they. We were talking it early on uh, in, when we were out in Oakland. It, it, you could be player of the month. I mean, you could have one of those years. There's the hitting instructor, Thad Bosley. Been around a while. He's been around so long. He actually played against me. That's how actually, he was coming around. up and I was going out. But <laughs> you could you could probably you could maybe hit 10 or 12 home runs and hit 380 in the minor leagues. And if your on base percentage wasn't 400 or better, you're not going to be get their minor league player of the month. That's, that's what they preach. That's what they teach. And you need to do it. And I think it really starts with uh, Jason Giambi. I mean, when you're a big guy, and that's how that first inning started, when your big guy is able to subjugate his ego, take the walk, and not try to overswing or expand the strike zone, uh, you lead by example. I mean, he's one of the best of them. He's now walked 107 times and leads the American League. Got him. 2 2 pitch. Went up the ladder a little bit and powered a fastball right by Frank Medicino. That's strikeout number two for Jason Johnson. Well, it's not about stuff tonight. Eh? He's got a good fastball. He just can't get in the groove, and hopefully he'll do it. I mean, again, Lunar sits away. The ball runs in, but he's 95-96. He's just gotten behind. He can't hit his spots. And the one big swing by uh, Chavez, the three-run home run after the back-to-back -back walks, the big blow. The base is empty with two down. It was Johnny Damon. Looks at the pitch low. 39 multi hit games for Damon after he collected the two base knocks on Tuesday. And the A's like to tell you they'll uh, they'll give you numbers like that. But you know, Jim the bottom line is uh, when you see these type of numbers associated with Johnny Damon Jason Giambi Jermaine Dye. What's the winning. Percentage during the course of the 39 multi hit games for Johnny Damon and the nine games over 500 when he does it. This is bounced on a big hop for Jerry Harrison. He'll throw out Damon and he over. So Jason Johnson settles down a little bit. Pitch count much more effective. 3 0 Oakland. I get some New York Giants. They're on the feet here at the yard for the first plate appearance of, yeah, simply the. Uh, the best Cal Ripken against Barry Zito. First pitch swinging. Just sky to shallow right. Mike Menachino on the outfield grass to put it away. So Cal trying to uh, get out of a little bit of a, a mini slide. Jimmy hasn't had a face hit going back the last three games in his plate appearance here to start the fourth. Yeah, 0 for 13. It really started down in Tampa. Six now for his last 42. So. You know, chances the stances change a little bit. We talked about it last night. Maybe they're not feeling as comfortable. You know, maybe a little different tonight than it was last night because again when you're six for 42 you're going to try to make some adjustments. And the Orioles are seeing awfully good pitching. There's Tony Batista. Tony in the the DH capacity tonight for Mike Hargrove. Well, will Tony Batista be the the everyday third baseman next year for the Orioles. Uh, stay tuned. I guess as they uh, say in the trade. Well, he's got some work to do. Yeah, he's going to work on his defense a little bit. And as we mentioned last night, it's, you know, that ball's going to slice out of here. Not playing a lot of third base. Got to work on his conditioning. That's one of the problems they, uh, that Buck Martinez, who manages up in Toronto, didn't like. I think he really has to uh, work on on base percentage. He has to work on, you know, taking a walk, maybe being a little more selective using the whole field, something that he did when he used to hit all the home runs against the Orioles. You know, I always thought he was a pull hitter, and he predominantly is, but early in the year we showed the highlight package. He hit him everywhere right center, center field, left field. 
So again, it comes uh, down to how dedicated do you want to be to be the best player you can be. Zito's 2-2. Batista able to lay off that fastball that was up and in. It's real interesting when, as a pitcher, you know you don't have to throw a guy a strike to get him out. It makes it a lot easier. This is flared to right. It's going to drop for a base hit. And that payoff pitch, the changeup from Zito to Tony Batista, got it off on the end of the bat and dropped it into short right for the Orioles' first base hit of the evening. And that's what we're talking about. Three and two, two strikes, cut down your swing. And sometimes you're going to find some gold. End of the rainbow right here. Pot of gold, a little looper. Uh, first base hit right here for, and again, see the open stance, shoulder out, hits it right on the end of the bat. So, uh, again, the opposition not getting a whole lot of hits off of Barry Zito. You'll take them. First one for the Orioles tonight. Now where's the left handed hitter Chris Richard following it out of play Chris who's been in the number three spot in the lineup stationed again in right field tonight but moving down to number seven. Now for the Orioles uh, boy, the uh, the runs they have been at a real premium during the course of uh, this homestand that finishes the month of August. Mm. Breaking ball and a beauty to get ahead of Richard at 0 and 2. Birds have not won on the homestand. Swept by Toronto, lost the first two. And uh, huh? as you see, the Orioles averaging just uh, a 151 hitting percentage at the plate and scoring just four runs during the course of losing five in a row. And it coincides with uh, dropping the ball club now 24 games under the 500 mark. And I go back to that 1991 season when uh, Frank Robinson and Johnny Oates both managed the ball club and the birds lost 95 times. Jim that's the last time the Orioles have lost 90 games uh, plus. So that's 10 years ago and uh, well, unless there's a September to remember uh, that is going to be uh, equaled and uh, and distanced this year. No, it certainly is. I think last year the Orioles what 74 and 88, but they had to win an eight out of their last 11. Mm -hmm. Chris Richard got fooled as he tried to check it. Zito came up and in with that fastball. The fan Richard for out number two here in the second. But what he'll do is you get the curveball going down, the fastball going up. He can pitch up with the best of them. So he's changing your eye level if you're a hitter. And so he hooked him early on in the count and then. Chris Richard, much better low ball hitter than high ball hitter. He just he knows that. I walked through the uh, locker room today, and there he's sitting with uh, Hernandez and Rick Peterson, going over the hitters, what they're going to try to do. Greg Myers, backup catcher, sitting there with him. And he certainly can give uh, Oakland a lot of insight into uh, what the Orioles like and don't like as a former Oriole. Hey, Fernando Lunar chasing that Zito pitch down the changeup. Fernando getting the call tonight from Mike Hargrove hitting in the. Uh, the eighth spot in the lineup after Brooke Fordyce has caught the first couple of games of the series. Mike of just trying to find some combinations right at the moment that will be productive offensively. I mean, that's the bottom line. And you're with us at the top of the show tonight. We, uh, we let you hear from Mike Hargrove with regard to that, and he's as frustrated as anybody, but also he has to. Uh, Keep encouraging uh, some of these young troops. Lunaro dropped this base hit into shallow center. Well, Fernando, he fought off a, a two seam fastball down and in. Well, Lunar keeping the Orioles' second inning alive with the Birds' second hit of this frame. Yeah, trying to come inside 0 and 2. So, uh, Fernando, line drive hitter, that's what he hits. and. As we've seen so much over the last 46, 47 innings, it comes down to the Orioles being able, if they're going to generate any offense, going to have to do it with two outs. So Matos, you can see right there, only seven at bats, dislocated shoulder in spring training, out on rehab, different levels through the minor league Orioles system. So Luis has got to step up, and of course Barry Zito says, "Wait, this is a ninth place hitter. He's only one for seven. This is the guy I have to get out." Let's see if Luis Matos could pick up one of those clutch two-out base hits as Zito will miss downstairs. 
Matos Mitchell starting his fourth consecutive games at a pace hit and seven trips to the plate in his first duty with the Orioles this year. The 1-0 for Zito is a called strike. I'll tell you what, you will not see a shallower outfield. These guys can go get them. They play very shallow. I mean, they're almost saying, hey, try to hit it over my head or hit it up the gap. And you can do that when you can cover a lot of territory. So once again, I mean, Die playing extremely short in right field. Damon shallow, long shallow in left. And it's not a very big ballpark. Now they're going to take a lot of line drives that normally would fall in front of you. 2 1 for Zito de Matos is on the outside corner to even the count at 2 2. That's amazing. I mean, last night they, they walked the Luis Matos twice, and right there, 2 1 changeup to a guy that's been out all year. And Matos trying to get the Orioles on the board. And they'll pick up the two out base hit. With Batista and Lunar aboard. And Zito's 2 2. Pop them up. Should get Barry Zito out of the second inning. Had a committee meeting on the mound for the A's, and Miguel Tejada said, Let me take charge to put it away. Orioles strand a couple. A's lead it 3 zip after two. At the yard, Michael Regat, Jim Palmer, Jason Johnson gave up a three run home run after the hour and 20 minute rain delay to Eric Chavez in the opening inning. And that's where things stand. Heading to the top of the third. Be the Giambi guys, uh, Jeremy Giambi, followed by Big Brother Jason, and then Jermaine Die, the three to face Jason Johnson here in inning number three. So if Jason Johnson can uh, continue on track that he established in uh, the second inning, when I mean, how many pitches did he throw in the first inning? Well, 40 plus. 40 plus. Uh, like 42 or three, and. Uh, Again, it's really just the fastball, 3 2 fastball to Chavez. And the stuff is good. You mentioned Jer Jeremy Giamba coming over from Kansas City. Well, he proved he could play a triple A. He had like 372, 20 home runs back in 1998. He sent him back to Omaha. He hit almost 350 the next year. Jason Johnson's 1 1 pitch. He threw it right by Jeremy Giamba. Good two seam fastball. Seem to explode down and out of the zone, Jim. Well, right now, I think uh, until Jason proves otherwise, he's got a good fastball. He's going to throw it, and that's probably what they're going to look for. But the minute he starts dropping some good curveballs over or some changeups, and the air to the left center field and deep. Moore is on the track in front of the wall to pull it in. And Melvin Moore got a good jump on the baseball and got back to the track. And it's about up against that 376 mark to haul in the Jeremy Giambi opposite field shot. That is exactly what the pitchers like this year. They moved home plate back about seven, eight feet. Never taking his eyes off him, just drifting back as that ball carries pretty well. And that's the way you like to face Jason Giambi with nobody on. Not that that means a whole lot. That's the way he faced him back in the first. Walked him, die, and then the home run. He just won't really expand the strike zone. I mean, you have to get. He's kind of like Wade Boggs in a sense, but with power, a lot of power. He's just not going to swing at his pitch until he has to, or your pitch until he has to. A breaky ball, backdoor variety on the outside corner for Jason Johnson. So I always looked at a hitter with really. what's his attitude. That curveball was probably two or three inches off the outside corner, and uh, you know, Bill Welke's got a pretty big strike zone. It doesn't matter. Heard that glove of Fernando Lunar pop as Jason Johnson buried that fastball on the outside edge to get ahead of Jason Giambi. And see that probably one was an inch or two off the outside corner. And uh, Jason says, well, that's what the strike zone is. Instead of complaining and instead of worrying about it, you're going to have to adjust to it. Does it make it harder? Of course. No doubt about it. It's a pitcher a big advantage when he doesn't have to throw the ball over the plate. It's the whole key to pitching. The whole key to pitching is to throw enough strikes to get him to swing at balls. Unless you're Nolan Ryan or Sandy Koufax or Pedro Martinez, where you, your stuff's so good. 
They'll get ahead, make them expand the strike zone. Even the best hitters do that. The 2 2. Breaking ball. Base hit right field. And a breaking pitch. And Jason Giambi drilled it between Hairston and Conine on the right side. No, Giambi is aboard with a one out base hit. He just doesn't miss mistakes. Ponson doesn't get the fastball in on Tuesday night. Home run. Last night, Josh Towers doesn't get the fastball quite where he wants it on his, in on his fist. Double over the bag for an RBI. Curveball, a little bit higher than Jason wanted. Single to right. This is why the guy's a 330 hitter, and this is why he was the most valuable player last year. And as I said last uh, night, this is why when he becomes a free agent, if that indeed does happen, there are going to be a lot of people waiting in line. There will be that. And uh, maybe some of the uh, clubs with the bigger payrolls in the game. Once the A's know, they uh, need to keep Jason Giambi out on the, uh, the West Coast. Well, they're a small market team. $35 million payroll plus maybe now with Damon and uh, uh, Jermaine Dye over here. But the bottom line is, is that what I like about uh, Jason Giambi, he can play, and he's very honest, refreshingly honest. He said, "I never thought I'd make 16 million or whatever, but that's there are a lot of guys making more, and there are." Yes, there are. Now here's Jermaine Dye, breaking ball on the ground to Cal Ripken. They'll go to Hurston for one double play. Orioles turned it behind Jason Johnson to get out of uh, inning number three. Well, that 5 4 3 double play started by the Iron Man. After two and a half, Oakland leads it 3 0. Tension of the last couple of nights. We touched on this somewhat. We just got to look at Miguel Tejada. Now, would he be one of them? Stay tuned. Well, now we know who one is. All right. But we well, still have that? two to one cover. We're already. I'm not going to give it away. We already said. We know that if people is. were really paying attention, they would have. The last and, couple of nights. And listen to our opening. We would have talked about uh, <laughs> the fact that he hit 30 home runs. Ryan Roberts ground ball to the hole. Look at Tejada breaks. Giambi with a pick at the other end. A gun down Roberts. Well, forget about the home runs. We've also been talking about one of the finest arms from even the home at shortstop in Major League Baseball. Well, I'll tell you right here. I mean, this is like a tag team match right here because Giambi's going to bail him out. Look at this little pick. There we go. Scoop it up. I think you're at Baskin Robbins. And a little scooper. That's a low throw. And of course, if you're not playing well defensively, the first baseman doesn't come up with that throw, and you have a leadoff runner. Fine play by Miguel Tejada. We have witnessed that the last couple of nights of this series as well. Here's Jerry Hairston. Jerry drew a walk his first turn against Barry Zudo. Fly ball in a gap in left center and deep. Damon Chasey can't get there. Off the face of the wall. Jerry Hairston with a stand up two base hit. Hairston made a bid to go out of here on Barry Zito. A face of the wall to the left of the 376 mark. Well, here's to check it in with double number 20 on the year. Well, it's a trade off when you play shallow. If you play a little bit deeper, you might catch this ball. High fly ball. Look how shallow they're playing. And they're both going as hard as they can. You'll see Long come into the picture right about there. So no chance to get to that leadoff double. The Orioles actually, uh, Roberts hitting it sharply. Doubled by Hairston. Already three base hits. Here's Melvin Mora who looks at that looping breaking ball that's in for a called strike. And once again the opportunity to score some runs. Well, Melvin on the year from runners in scoring position uh, getting it done about 24 percent of the time at 242. Now Zito bluffing Jerry Hairston back to the bag. And yet the opportunities Jim just talked about have not been very plentiful here in this homestand to be able to uh, put runs on the board. And Melvin Mora. In the months of May and June and then in July and August taking uh, a significant dip at the plate. Well don't you think when your wife has quintuplets that, yeah. that maybe your mind somewhere else. I mean really I don't care how professional you are. I mean it's 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 not. A normal occurrence. 
Yeah, we talked about Melvin last year and he's played very well uh, and I can considering all the distractions that you would imagine going on in his life it, I would imagine it's hard to really bring the focus to the ball play I mean you know he's a a very hard worker every day with Terry Crowley so the efforts there it's just a tough enough game without that kind of distraction got Hairston leaning and the throw glanced off Jerry's body into short right field Hairston will pick himself up and move over to third base Azito had him as Medikino and Tejada jockeying with Hairston to get to the bag. And then Barry Zito's throw into the body of Hairston and glanced into short right field. Well, a couple errors for Oakland on Tuesday night. Orioles weren't able to take advantage. Didn't make a good throw. As you mentioned, the throw right into him. So heads up by Jerry. And they're going to play in at first and third. Routine ground ball, a fly ball of any depth is going to put the Orioles on the board. Fly ball, right field, not very deep. Jermaine Dive's got a terrific arm. Hairston will draw a throw as Dye delivered the strong one-hop throw to the plate to Ramon Hernandez. I'm telling you, the way you're scoring runs, and uh, with Hairston's speed, if you don't hide the Dye out there, you're going to be running. If Jeremy Giambi is not dh in playing right field, Tom Treblehorn's going to send Hairston, but right here, you're not even going to be thinking about it because you got Jeff Conine coming to the plate and dies. Got a, a rifle almost all the way in the air. So a very prudent play by Treblehorn, considering in the way Die can throw. Now 11 outfield assist yep. for Jermaine Die this year, and uh, the Orioles down by three. The ball just wasn't deep enough. Die's throw. Knocked down in front of the plate by Ramon Hernandez. Here's Jeff Conine now. Second inning that the Orioles have had runners in scoring position. Hairston 90 feet away for Conine who looks at the breaking ball for a called strike. Through three innings, Zito's best pitch tonight is that, that hook. Yeah. Shoe top drop off the table. You can yellow hammer, a yacker. I don't care what you call it, it is breaking. Went to the changeup but missed away. So changeups up tonight. Fastballs, meh. No, not great command of it. It's the, but the curveball. I don't see too many that have that kind of break. Two one to go now. Round ball that'll back up Chavez from deep behind the bag to throw out Jeff Conine. Inning over. Now the Orioles a strand a runner in scoring position for the second time in three innings tonight. Three nothing over is uh, not ready to roll into September and uh, strong and vocal crowd here at the yard tonight on the, uh, the backpack giveaway evening Jason Johnson facing the uh, the villain as far as the Orioles fans are concerned Eric Chavez who rocked the three run home run at deep right center second home run of the series number 21 on the year in the opening inning as we mentioned seven in his career against the Orioles. Yeah, he has uh, always swung the bat very well uh, against the birds. Went back to a few years ago when he got a taste of big league life. And then they exploded on the scene after being the, uh, the 10th overall selection. First round, Jim, you talked uh -huh. about it back in 1996. California kid that is very much touted after being selected by the A's and not a long time in the organization just popped up Cal Ripken will drift into foul territory up that line and left to put it away. Well, Jason Johnson gets Eric Chavez to open up inning number four. A miss report from the Raven zone for uh, an insider's look at the defending world champions Super Bowl champs the Baltimore Ravens it's every Saturday night at 6 and 10 30 starting on September the 8th before the Raven season opener and it happens only on Comcast Sportsnet best place to go before during and after the game. Well, Miguel Tejada flared a base hit to shallow right his first turn at the plate following that three run home run by Chavez and also made his second outstanding play of this series going to his backhand side into the hole and making a strong throw in the bottom of the third to take an infield hit away from Brian Roberts. 
Is he about ready to be one of the, the elite shortstops in the game? The one old pitch is lifted to shallow right center for Chris Richard to take care of. So Jason Johnson gets to hot him for out number two. Now oh, Jason settling down. Now I'm being diabetic. You wonder when you're prepared to pitch at 7:05 and the game starts at what about 8:20, 8:25 that. No, sometimes and you know we've seen from time to time where he'll get a little bit uh, his sugar level will get a little bit messed up if it, so if you don't know how that's going to bother you, you know, a little wears a little monitor and checks his uh, especially when he's pitching I think every two innings. But he certainly seems to be in much better control and it's not about the stuff early on it was just about commanding the baseball couldn't quite throw the ball where he wanted and right now all of a sudden more confidence with uh, the curveball and. We mentioned good velocity with the fastball as far as uh, when it comes to radar guns, but that doesn't always mean something. It's facing Terrence Long, the left handed hitting left fielder who looks at a called strike as Johnson works the inside corner. It's really just a matter for Jason. He's done it so well this year. Again, being able to focus and keep that focus is just to slam the door. And ultimately, uh, the way the Orioles are scoring run, they may not come up with three, but then again, what you've done is put them in a position to win. And that's what he's been able to do so much better this year than last. You go out there, you, uh, you, know, you league average is probably what, about 4.8 runs a game? Mm -hmm. You come in with a 3.43 ERA, and you pitch right around there, you're in and you're out. You're going to have a nice major league career and win a lot of games. A one two to long. This has popped up in the shallow center. Brian Roberts to take charge and he's got it in and over. This Jason Johnson's only given up one base hit since the three run homer by Chavez. He's lead at three nothing. Well, one of the terrific spots to see Orioles baseball. We do that in left center field or beyond the bullpens and of course above the auxiliary board and right where there's a Standing room opportunity in this, uh, this beautiful and uh, intimate setting here at the yard. And a lot of folks take advantage of that each and every day that the Orioles are at home. Well, Cal Ripken looking at a cold strike. So Cal, after a, uh, in his first plate appearance, popping out to Frank Menachino in an 0 2 hole against tough Barry Zito. Breaking ball, drilled to center, big hit Cal Ripken. Yeah, that breaks the offer for Rip going back to uh, the early part of his homestand against the Toronto Blue Jays. Now you're 0 for 13. Now you're 1 for 14, or you're really 1 for 1. I'll tell you what. I mean, here we are, 20, 20 years in in the major leagues, and he could look for the breaking ball, and when he gets it, hit it as well as anybody I've ever seen. He'd sit on breaking balls. Remember Mike Witt, mm -hmm. great overhand curveball. Uh, there is a, as far as games played. Yeah, tying Dave Winfield tonight, so the next one will uh, put Cal in the ace spot by himself. Winfield was a baseball Hall of Famer this year. So the Orioles, what, with 30 games left? That's it. Oh, Val play, uh, Cal plays in uh, 28 of them. He will have an easy, even uh, 3,000. Mm -hmm. Be a nice number. That'd be a fitting way to wind it up. Be behind his hit total for his career, but hey, Tony Batista trying to unleash and if the Orioles back to within one, kind of pick a pitch that he can drive out of here on Barry Zito. Zito began the year and won three straight, but then lost five in a row. So. Then a little bit of a roller coaster ride as Batista laid off as Zito tried to work the outside corner. Well, interesting. Uh, Rick Peterson, pitching coach, who's been there a couple of years now, has done a wonderful job with uh, you know, this young staff. Said he walked into spring training after going seven and four with a 2.88 ERA and said, "I don't trust my fastball." He said it's only 89, 90 miles per hour. And, and Rick said, "What do you mean? They, 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 you know, you got a curveball, a changeup." He said, no, no. He said, no, they're, they're going to adjust. I don't throw hard enough. They know what's coming. So <laughs> I think he got him refocused. And, you know, and, and Barry just turned 23. I mean, he's single. And, you know, 
He's he's kind of a free spirit. <laughs> three, he's left handed. Three two to Batista. <laughs> lifted to shallow left for Terrence Long to put away. Now if that breaking ball oh, yeah. continues on the same track it's on right now, he's going to get a lot of hitters out. Oh, he is, and and. Um, a eye, bird's eye view. Anyway, you look at it, that was the first out of the inning. But Rick Peterson saying, I mean, he's a guy that I can talk to. Uh, we can talk about yoga because he does yoga and focusing on the now and kind of what we talked about, Jason Johnson, seeing the psychologist and being able to really have that focus you need to be successful. And some players can do it more easily than others. Here's Chris Richard in the face the left hander Zito as a breaking ball misses high. So an opportunity for Chris Richard from Mike Hargrove to get some swings against a quality left hander. And then this is what we've talked about when Mark Mulder was on the mound earlier in the series. 2 and 0 on Richard. Jimmy's going to have to show the ability, Chris Richard is. to hit good left handed pitching. Now that's if you uh, are looking to be an everyday outfielder. And a productive one in a major league lineup. Fly ball, deep left center field. Terrence Long on the track, in front of the wall, leaping up, and he made the grab. Tejada will gun back to GMB, and they'll double up Cal Ripken. Now the A's outfield defense once again coming to the forefront. Terrence Long played shallow, got all the way back to the barrier to rob Chris Richard with a leaping grab, and then with the relay from Tejada, doubled up Cal Ripken. Things over. Now the reaction from Terrence Long, giving that clinch fist salute to Miguel Tejada and Jason Giambi after he scaled the left field barrier. Now we move to the fifth. Oakland maintaining their three run advantage. Jason Johnson starts Ramon Hernandez out with a breaking ball. Hernandez uh, got jammed and bounced out to Cal Rick in his first turn. Breaking ball, same spot. Jason Johnson quickly ahead at 0 and 2 as you see the pitch count by any. Sounds like a totally different pitcher after he got out of the first. Yeah, just uh, not in uh, tune with his windup in the first inning. Made the one bad pitch after the back to back walks, and that's really what this game is all about. Terrific stuff tonight. Just couldn't command it early on. You know, now, if they're staying over the rubber, arm out in front, he can pitch in, he can pitch out and get on top of his breaking ball. Just couldn't do that. And of course, uh, over the course of the season, you hope that when you do give up two or three runs in the first inning, then a normal offensive ball club's going to come back. And if you do your job, slam the door, you got a chance to win. I'm not really sure that's the case with this uh, the lineup that's decimated by in by injuries. Yeah, Mark Wiley knows that. He knows right now Jason has done what he's done all year. If he has trouble, you know, last year he panicked, he'd get out of his rhythm. This year he just says, okay, what do I need to do to be what I want to be? Line to center, it's going to drop base hit. Ramon Hernandez leading off inning number five for Oakland. Uh, Hernandez uh, collecting the A's a fourth base hit of the night on that leadoff single. Talked a little bit earlier about Sidney Ponson on our IWF injury report. Uh, Sidney was on the DL uh, from uh, mid April to uh, about the second week of May. Had a good run of about six weeks and hasn't won since the 29th of June. And uh, Jim, going to miss one start, maybe two, according to Mike Hargrove. And uh, of course, there is speculation that Ponson also could be lost for the rest of this year. Almost well, a, positive, a precautionary yeah. thing, yeah, exactly, with the elbow bothering him. I mean, the club's not going anywhere. He's five and ten. He's been dropping his arm uh, really over the last the month. And maybe that's why he has the uh, has what they call tennis elbow. Normally, uh, medial epicondyle is where all your flexor tendons on the under part of your arm attached. That's where most pitchers have the problem. But he has it up on top, which is more like a tennis uh, tennis elbow, and it can be pretty painful. But again, when you drop your arm and you, you, your arm is not in the right slot, it's going to put a lot of pressure on all parts of your body. I don't care if you're 24 like Sydney, or if you're 32, or 40, or whatever the case is. And he's been struggling with his uh, windup all year long. Jason Johnson now facing the number nine hitter, Frank Menachino. 
drops the breaking ball in on the inner half for a called strike. Yeah, Cleveland continues to, to lead the Boston Red Sox after that Robbie Elmar two run home run three run tribe as they play in the eighth inning at Jacobs Field and a Cleveland win tonight would send Boston spinning six games back of the New York Yankees and uh, if Oakland were to beat the Orioles tonight they'd also be six games back in the wild card and things not looking good uh, for Joe Kerrigan and the Red Sox as uh, they have uh, not been able to win since the last two games of uh, the Texas series and now on the verge of being swept by Cleveland. And maybe losing Nomar Garcia uh -huh. for the rest of the season. And he went on the disabled list yesterday. It'll be a tough road. It's been a tough road all year long for him. The Yankees all are sudden, heading yeah. up to Boston. Three game series. I think it's Clemens and uh, Pedro tomorrow night. But Red Sox are about it. They're going to fall six back. They're almost going to have to sweep and get themselves back into it in the AL East as Johnson's fastball will drive Menachino back. Well, you know, it's really good, kind of good news, bad news. Bad news, you're not playing very well, but the good news, if you are able to play well, you can make up some ground. I mean, it's just, it's really what you want. Because I think the most frustrating thing is when you get five or six back, you play well, but the team in front of mm -hmm. you plays well, and you don't have any chance to, to do anything about it. Now when you're not playing well and you're playing somebody like the Yankees who are a little bit of a role or you're playing Oakland well. The consequences can be very dire. On the outside corner Mason Johnson. This two seam fastball to even the count at 2 2. You talked about uh, Menachino Frank taking pitches where's well, perfect example. And he's not afraid to go to two strikes. Jason Johnson trying to find a way to keep things right where they are. The birds down by three through the middle innings. Medikino with a bouncy ball over the head of Jeff Cohen into the right field corner. Hernandez lost the baseball. Now Richards throw to third won't be in time. Well, Hernandez has put on the brakes at second base and stopped. Ronnie Washington, the third base coach, is saying, uh, Ramon, come on, get over here. And Hernandez looking a little bit bewildered on the base pass. Well, the play's behind him, Mike, so he doesn't really know where it's going, and he didn't pick up the third base coach, as you mentioned, until later on. And when he did, he comes over to third. But, I mean, watch this approach. Ball down and away, just chops it. Conine playing in to hold the runner. Can't backtrack quick enough. I mean, should be automatic uh, first to third, but right here, uh, Chris Richards sees that he doesn't really uh, go all the way. Belated throw over the head of the cutoff man, Brian Roberts, first and third, nobody out. Yeah, Jason Johnson's in the spot, already trailing three nothing. Johnny Damon at the plate and slashing it foul. Well, there was an adjustment period for this guy. Johnny Damon had a lot of struggling that took place in April and May. He's trying to lift that average from down in the low 200s. Sitting at uh, been above 260. Uh, hit an 0 for 10. Finish up the uh, Oakland series with Detroit and the early portion of game number one here against the O's. Well, this uh, 300 plus August did coincide with their run. Uh, they have played extremely well. We talked to him down in the cage. He said, I went over and you know, 214 hits last year, stole 46 bases, my career year, and I knew ball club, and I figured I'd just, I might even be better than that. Yeah. And he's always been a slow starter. He laid off Johnson's fastball to missed away. I think also, I mean, let's be honest, there are a lot of players, and we can look at the numbers of the A's. We talked about since the All Star break, they, you know, first. Uh, First in record, first in runs. We've seen tonight on base percentage already two walks and three run home run following it. Earn run average, the pitchers have been on a roll, both starting and then the bullpen, only maybe the closer role of, of any question. And also Damon coming over from a, you know, habitually down in the, mm -hmm. the standing Kansas City ball club to playing for a team that most people pick. In, in spite of what Seattle's done, Oakland was 
the going favorite. into the season. Yeah, they yeah, were the favorite. Sure. Coming off uh, the, the playoff experience of a year ago. So a lot of times when you have a career year, you know, expectation goes up, not only yours, but the people that you play for and the fans and et cetera, et cetera. So not a very good start, but the bottom line is well, what's his finish going to be like? They'll remember that. Yeah, that they will. Uh, Johnny Damon awaiting the 2 1 from Jason Johnson. Fly ball shallow right. Let's watch Chris Richard. Hernandez, not a lot of speed will tag. Here he comes. Richard's throw to the plate. Not in time. Sacrifice fly. And the RBI for Johnny Damon to up the Oakland lead to 4 0. Man, and Damon and something he doesn't do very well. Usually the league uh, averages somewhere around 60 percent. Only 47 percent of the time he's even able to get a runner in. Less than two outs and a runner on third, but not tonight. So Damon does the job. That's going to make it four nothing. And uh, when the Orioles had an opportunity, Melvin Moore wouldn't be able to, to hit that fly ball deep enough. Jeremy Giambi, the left-handed hitting DH. Pitch out, nothing happening. Frank Menachino. Menachino, a sweet piece of hitting after the <laughs> leadoff single by Hernandez. He pulled the hands, Jim, and fought that pitch off and on a big hop over the head of Jeff Gona. Where are we? We're in Baltimore. The Baltimore chop. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's going to be a guy that uh, we'll, we'll go see tomorrow. He'll be in his office. Uh, that'll be Lou Pinella. <laughs> now, Lou was a terrific hitter with power, but he could do that. He could pull his hands in and hit it anywhere. He yep. could hit it over the bag, hit it over your head. He could hit it hard. He could hit it soft. It's going to get out of play. And then the Oriole manager, Mike Hargrove. You mentioned oh, yeah. what about a 290, 292. I know Lou's like a 292 lifetime hitter. Here's a guy he told me the other day, I wore you out. Maybe didn't hit it very hard, but I got my base hits. No doubt about that. Probably out of patience by the time well, he got ready to Sure. Hit. He made you mad by uh, going through his human rain <laughs> delay tactics. Way. Made a lot of pitchers mad, too. Lunar will gun behind Menachino. Tonai had to move quickly to keep it from going into right field. Well, so did uh, Jeremy Giambi at the plate. He's trying to get out of the way. See, I mean, yeah, he, he almost gets hit in the face on coming by, and then Lunar almost gets him going down to first. Swinging gate. Yeah, they're coming at both directions. Mini G. I like that name. It's a good one. Jason Johnson working the outside corner. It's a little uh, brotherly love right there. You know, he learned from his brother. You're looking fastball. He throws a change up away. I don't know, only the second strike. I don't have to swing at it. Look for your pitch. There's big brother. I mean, Jason Giambi talking on Tuesday down at the cage. He said, "You know, how many times does anybody ever have a chance to ride to the ballpark with his brother? You know, travel with him. You know, we grew up together. I was the big guy. He was always trying to, you know, follow uh, my footsteps and whatever. And here we are. We're playing on a winning team. We get to go eat together on the road." He said, "I mean, it can't be any better than this. Life's good, huh? Hell yeah. About two-two. Back them off." And I think if you ever saw Billy uh, Ripken and Cal Ripken interact when they were the Orioles, both in the same locker room, and you can see how what kind of a special relation it is to have a chance to play with your your brother. And then of course the bonus for Cal was that his dad was either managing or coaching. Yeah, with senior uh, in tow as well. Let's see if Menachino is going to be on the move. 3 2 pitch not going. And this is down and in. And that'll put a couple aboard again. I 
If you're looking for the uh, final preseason game of the defending Super Bowl champions uh, August schedule Comcast Sportsnet the place to be don't miss a Super Bowl matchup tomorrow of course the Ravens and the New York football Giants go at it Jim Fossil's got his guys uh, down here in Baltimore and it'll cover you live right across the street PSI net stadium gets pregame coverage 11 o'clock kickoff at noon only right here on Comcast Sportsnet. And speaking of which all of us here at Comcast Sportsnet would like to welcome all of you our Oriole fans and you're watching the birds thanks to uh, wonderful cable companies like Comcast Adelphia Cox Communications Time Warner all of those good folks help bring you the Orioles right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Well, John Bale is up earlier. He'll get loose and uh, you know that Jason Johnson did not want to walk Jeremy Giambi to get to his brother. Jason walked his first time up and then hit a curveball in a hole in the right field for a base hit. Well, he's had a pretty good series. He had two for two. He walked three times the first night, one for three last night with another walk. Tonight, been on base twice. Hit his 32nd home run. And remember, as we talked about, though, on Tuesday night, he came in here under 200 as a hitter at Oriole Park. Even overall against the Orioles, about 240. For his uh, major league career, but there have been some uh, long and loud home runs involved in that 240 average for GMB against the Birds. I think the one I remember, I think the only blown save uh, Randy Myers. that Randy Myers had was a home run that uh, Jason hit. Yep, took him to dead center field. Uh -huh. Back in '97, I'm going back a few years, but yeah. wire to wire year for the Orioles. And of course Jason uh, I mean every time you talk to him the, the Mark McGuire name enters the conversation because you learned so much for him and I think he uh, has taken that same mentoring philosophy and been able to do it with a lot of the young A's mm -hmm. that he has. On a 2 0 to Jason Giambi breaking ball now you see what Jason Johnson to Fernando Lunar are thinking not going to give in to Jason Giambi on 2 0. Down by four with a couple of boards. See, that's a great pitch and it's a great take by a hitter. He's not looking for the curveball, and then basically what he said was, you know what? Hey, you made a great pitch, but why do I need to swing at it? Because that's only the first strike. And again, he's not, he's very willing to hit deep into the count. Okay, and he's very selective. Three and one on Jason Giambi. Well, the frustration showing uh, in the body language of Jason Johnson there. Well, the, the Orioles have scored four runs now in the last 49 innings. He's already given up four. He's right in the heart of the lineup with a couple of guys on, would die on deck. This is not a real positive situation. I don't mean to be, you know, cute or whatever. It's just it's a frustrating time for the Orioles pitchers. And, uh, you know, they recognize that the Orioles hitters are going through a tough time, and that's what team baseball is all about. Another walk for Jason Giambi, his second of the night. That was last night. Well, yeah, I think Jason's just coming off off the mound and, you know, basically saying, Am I going to get any of those pitches? Early on, he got the pitch away to, to Jason the last time up, but this pitch right here looks pretty good, three and one. Let's take a look right here. Curveball low. Sinker low. There's a 2 0 curveball. Now, this pitch, he got it early on. This time, it's definitely off the plate. This is the one he's he's got the inside corner. He feels that he made a real good pitch, three and one. So the base is loaded, and that's not making him very happy. I don't blame him as die steps to the plate. And some conversation between Jason Johnson and the home plate umpire Bill Welke. The unfortunate thing Mike is that when you yell at umpires right, and it's an emotional time because you care and whatever is that you don't usually get a lot of pitches because they think you're showing them up and, in, and basically you are. You try to make the point a little more subtler than walking off the mound right and talking to them. It's just again sometimes you it's hard to retain your composure. You think you're making good pitches you're not getting them. See, we never had to worry about it too much because Weaver would be, you know, he'd already be yelling and screaming and probably been tossed by this time. Wouldn't do any good, but that's what would happen. 1-1 to Jermaine Dye with a base is loaded. 
It's a foul ball. Got a piece of die in that front foot. Jason Johnson now ahead of the cleanup man, Jermaine Dye, who's walked, scored a run tonight, and so bounced into a double play that ended the third inning. Three times he's uh, unloaded the grand slam home runs in this bases loaded situation. And then Aquino and the Giambis. Jeremy at second, Jason at first. So all the stations are occupied here against Jason Johnson in inning number five. And dealing the one two to die. Rip to left, base hit. Heading to the plate, Medikino. Stop sign for Jeremy Giambi as Luis Matos throw hit the cutoff man, Cal Ripken. 5 nothing Oakland on the RBI base knock for Jermaine Dye. And that's going to be the end of the line, it appears, for Jason Johnson. And the A's just keep doing what they do best get leads and build on them. Oh, he had too hard to score two. Nice short stroke. Right there, Jeremy Giambi uh, as uh, Menachino will come in to make it five to nothing. And, uh, I think maybe a little conversation. Yeah, uh, Mike Hargrove, uh, you know, he's been around. He appreciates the effort. Just a very frustrating night. 43 pitches in the first inning, three runs. Tough night for Jason. Tell you about John Bale when we get back. A's have added on a couple of lead at 5 0. And John Bale, the left hander on the mound, to face Eric Chavez with the bases loaded. And one out here in the fifth. Oakland's tallied twice. And they bumped the lead up to 5 0. John's pitched pretty well. Uh, nine innings, uh, only giving up three runs this time around. Went two, uh, three and two thirds inning. Gave up a couple of runs against Toronto. So his job, lefty versus lefty. I've been pretty impressed. Oh, velocity 90, 91 miles per hour. He showed a pretty good change up, good curveball. Mike Flanagan talking about it over the weekend, trying to maybe drop the arm angle and be a little bit more effective uh, so the left handers will feel the ball is coming at them. Try to get out the tough hitter, Eric Chavez. And missing with a fastball. Two and one on the third base with Chavez. A big blow of this one. 400 foot plus. Three run home run to deep right center in the opening inning. Well, Chavez, much better hitter this year against lefties than he's ever been in his first two years. Ground ball to the right of Roberts. Hairston for one. That's all the O's are going to be able to get. Fielder's choice RBI bounce out. Eric Chavez give him his fourth run batted in of the evening. Jeremy Giambi to the plate. And Oakland has backed up that three spot they put on the board in the first with three more. Here in the fifth and lead it six zip. High chopper, a little trouble getting out of the glove. I don't think he's going to be able to uh, turn it anyway because uh, Chavez hits it the other way. There's a, a Jeremy Giambi to make it six nothing. So Chavez, who's now at first, I mean, last year he hit 195, the year before, you know, in the low 190s, maybe I think 188, somewhere in like that. All of a sudden he's up at 234, and right there, a chance to have a run, and he did. The runners on the quarters now with two down. And here's Miguel Tejada to face John Bale. And second tour of duty this year for John Bale with the Birds. Appeared in a couple games back in April. And uh, before and going back to Rochester. One and one on Tejada. Speaking of Rochester, too, Jim, we note that uh, the Orioles dealt Calvin Pickering mm -hmm. earlier this uh, this day, actually this afternoon, dealt him to the Cincinnati Reds for a player to be named later. So Pickering had the great promise a few years ago with uh, the weight gain and never uh, realized the potential that you know, the Orioles felt that. Uh, might be his as they were. they signed him and moved him through the organization. Well, and also you go out and sign David Segui for four years. So where is he going to play? You know, I suppose maybe he could DH. When I last saw, he looked like he was leading the what the International League in RBIs. He's having a pretty good year. They only took a little off. Even as a count of two-two on Miguel Tata. Well, that's what you have to do. Fastball count. Two balls, one strike. There's Sid Thrift. 
So uh, Sid wheeling and dealing. And we will all anxiously await who the player to be named later will be. <laughs> From the Cincinnati Reds organization after the Calvin Pickering deal today. Bales 2 2 pitch. Struck him out. He blew it right by Miguel Tejada. Halfway home at the yard. A's get three more and lead the Orioles 6 0. Yard going to be here a little bit longer than normal. Um, bottom of the fifth with Oakland out top 6 0 after the hour and 20 minute rain delay that has uh, things prolonged here tonight. Fernando Lunar leading things off against Barry Zito. So Zito now uh, rather cushioned and comfortable with his six run advantage. Well, he needs three outs to uh, be the pitcher of record. And he's that big curveball, and Walkie, I mean, that ball is right down the middle. You couldn't throw a better curveball than that. Of course, Fernando says thank you very much, but I've seen that tonight. Some pitches might have missed a little bit. Well, Jim, remember when uh, Tony LaRusso used to manage uh, the A's? Tony, rather a, a thespian type, uh, performed in the uh, the Oakland uh, theater groups and the Oakland ballet during the uh, Christmas season. Barry Zito did it as well. Was uh, in yeah, the nut nutcracker. nutcracker. Yeah. Well, he's left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I take that, huh? Lunar going to go the other way with a shot that's picked off by Jeremy to Jason Giambi, and he'll get to the bag ahead of Lunar. Uh, double written all over it. So the big guy got in the way. Oh, six nothing. It's easy, maybe sometimes to lose your focus if you're not paying attention. So uh, known more for his bat makes an awfully nice play right there. That ball get ball by him it down in the corner for two. The number nine hitter Luis Matos is Zito misses low. You know, it's interesting. Rick Peterson, uh, you know, pitching coach, saying that Barry Zito, it was very, he's kind of like the baseball version of Todd Marinovich, where his dad was very instrumental in his career and worked with him. Uh, Rick worked with him a long time before he ever got into uh, college baseball. So there was kind of a plan, and the ultimate plan was that he would sign and go to the big leagues. And he did. He's already accomplished a lot more than Todd Moravich ever did as an NFL quarterback. And let's oh, yeah. Zito's course is a little bit different than Moravich's. Just popped up in foul territory near the O's dugout. Jason Giambi's got room to take care of it for out number two. All right, fans all across America, people like you have stopped missing out on life's important sounds of conversations. They've discovered one of the best kept secrets to a more satisfying way of life. And you can too call American Hearing Centers today for your free videotape on the five steps to better hearing. The folks at the American Hearing Centers are at 1 800 808 years. Call them to reserve your copy and get back into the game. A frustrating evening for Jason Johnson. Trying to end his uh, personal three game losing slide. With a pitcher of record, of course, there tonight after uh, giving up the six runs to the A's in his four plus innings of work. And that sweet breaking ball again from Barry Zito to get ahead of Brian Roberts at 0 2. For Eric Chavez. He'll pick it, throw out Roberts. We go to the sixth. Oakland has a 6 0 lead. He likes what he sees on the field. He likes what he sees on the scoreboard. He likes what he sees because uh, if they win tonight, it's going to be the 21st time they won in the month of August. Well, that it will. And uh, they win tonight. They're in position to move six games ahead of the Boston Red Sox, who uh, have been swept by the Cleveland Indians. 3 1 the final out of Jacobs Field. Bartolo Colon beat Hideo Nomo, and Bob Wickman racked up the save. So an open win here tonight would push Boston six games back in the wild card hunt with uh, now less than 30 to go. And as we said, the Red Sox already six games back of the New York Yankees who beat Toronto today 5-4. So uh, things are working well in Oaktown as Terrence Long drills this big hit up the middle to open up inning number six against John Bale. And that was rocked oh, yeah. over the head of Bale to center field. It's almost like a limbo contest as he gets down. 
And once again, long, uh, it really doesn't matter. Very much like Giambi, doesn't hit for as much power against left handers, but uh, his batting average up over 290 against lefties. Ramon Hernandez, the right handed hitting catcher, he started the three run fifth. He sent eight hitters to the plate. Hernandez started it on a base hit to center. Well, it's interesting if you watch the, the, this three game series I mean, on Tuesday night, he went the other way with a double home run the other way last night. As a lot of hitters will do, you talk about it. I mean, Rafael Palmero early on hit the ball the other way, and then as he got bigger, stronger, smarter, he looked for pitches last night. Ramon looks for a 2 0 fastball inside half off of Josh Towers. And, uh, you know, late in the ball game, seventh inning, when Josh is a little tired and he's looking for his pitch, turns on and hits a home run. Tonight, how'd he start that inning? The three run inning, just dump one into center field, different approach. And of course, if you see your number three hitter, your leader doing the same kind of things, very easy to emulate him. And if you see your number three or four hitter, and that's why David Segui is so important to the Orioles because that's what he does. Yeah. He'll look for pitches, he becomes a home run hitter. He just goes the other way, becomes a high average hitter. But not only does he lead by the example, he gets on base. Makes it easier for the guys in front of him and behind him. And as you mentioned, I mean, uh, you know, when Hernandez hitting in the A spot for uh, you know, Menachino uh, in the ninth spot can get on and they can get their hits. Well, you can turn that line over, line up over in a hurry, and that's that's why they are leading the major league in runs since the the All Star game. They have better than five runs per game post All Star break, in which this ball club has just taken off. I mean, Seattle's going to waltz into town with the best pitching. Oakland has the second best pitching. They lead in runs scored. They're talking about Seattle. Now they hit a lot of home runs, well, they don't have that much, but they work the count. They got a great leadoff guy. They have number three and four and five hitters. Number five guy is second in the league in RBIs. Brett Boone, number uh, three and four, Martinez and Olerud, high on base percentages, high averages, you know, occasional home runs when they need it. A very solid lineup. That lineup is uh, sectioned off very handsomely, and uh, Art Howe likes the looks of this one too. Since Jermaine died, to join the ball club. And Miguel Tejada and uh, Terrence Long uh, hitting 6 7. The guys that can, uh, especially Tejada, when he was Chavez behind Jermaine Dye. So uh, that left right, left right scenario set up from Jason Giambi through Dye, Chavez. And then Miguel Tejada three through six and Terrence Long hitting behind them. Sky to shuttle center off the bat of Ramon Hernandez. It's Brian Roberts to squeeze it for out number one here in the sixth. And John Bale after the leadoff base hit able to get Ramon Second Hernandez. And tomorrow night you want to come out and not only see the Seattle Mariners but be a part of Southwest Airlines flyaway Friday during each inning the lucky ticket holder is going to win round trip tickets in Norfolk and finally one fan will win a trip to Orioles spring training in 2002 and if you're spotted wearing your O's orange and black you receive a Southwest Airlines gift certificate come on out and be with us here at the yard when Lou Pinello brings Seattle into town to see Mark Hargrove and uh, the birds tomorrow night. Frank Menachino. Menachino followed up that Hernandez base hit with a terrific piece of hitting. Mm -hmm. Pulled his hands and uh, bounced a ball over the head of Jeff Conine into the right field corner. I sent Hernandez to third. So Menachino, one for two on the night, facing John Bale. Two and zero oh as Bale missed downstairs is a uh, lucky zone, and that's why Mike Hargrove has uh, been ejected tonight after he took up the cause for Jason Johnson with Bill Welke. He has really condensed that zone squeezing as uh, oh, yeah. the guys in the dugout like to call it. Well there are fans down on uh, behind home plate that are getting on him. It's a pretty good pitch right there. He's put a number. Two out of Menachino. Try to check it. They'll fool them. But in all defense of Bill Welke, when Jason threw the 43 pitches in the first inning, it wasn't because Bill Welke had anything to do with it. He just lost command of the strike zone, and uh, a three-run home run kind of got open off on the right step. 
a little different story later, and even now here into the sixth. The strike zone's gotten pretty tight, and it has a tendency to do that sometimes when you're, you know, pitcher walks off the mound, and manager comes out. Shouldn't, but it does. John Bale trying to get Frank Manichino. With Terrence Long aboard. Dealing the 2 1 pitch. Long's going. Got away from Fernando Lunar. Long with that big turn as that baseball carrying back to Lunar. That's going to be the stolen base for Terrence Long. Well, it looks like a changeup, maybe a fastball, just bounces it. Long running, and that's why he'll get the credit for a. And right here, thinking about going to third because the ball gets by, but then it kind of comes back off the screen right to Fernando Lunar. Now, Lunar would have had a real tough time trying to throw out long, uh, even if he had come up with that pitch in the dirt. Ripped to the hole. Roberts a backhand. And then threw it over the head of Cal Ripken inexplicably into the. A's dugout. Well, see, I think everybody, I mean, Sam Perlazzo, uh, everybody's going to know what the intent was. Makes a nice play, does exactly what he has to do, which is knock the ball down. And of course, the intent is he's hoping that Terrence Long is going to overrun third base and that quick throw is going to get him. As it turns out, it is very hard to throw a ball from the seat of your pants. Again, nice play to get to it. Watch this range. See right there, I mean, off balance throw. Cal's not ready for it, can't get it into the dugout. That'll be an error. And your cat's insurance run, uh, that's going to be number seven. That'll be scored as the infield base hit for Frank Menachino. I think Brian Roberts, though, as you said, from that position, has got to hang out of the base. Oh, of course he does. And, and first year player. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not making an excuse for him. That's what it is. You think he's going to. We know Brian Roberts and I believe that he's going to understand that certain plays you make and the longer you, you make them and the longer or more often you're out there the less chance of, of making plays like that and if it continues he won't be playing at the major league level and it, it, it's just the way this game is played certain ways that, and certain things that have to be done. And that's why we keep talking about the fact that I mean this is like. Like taking out a, a new ship for a trial run because most of these players have never played at the major league level. Brian hadn't played that much shortstop. He's got uh, good, he's got good instinct, pretty good hands. Trying to play at a position that he doesn't play that much, and then trying to learn at the major league level. And you can get exposed. You just did. Fifteenth error on the year for Roberts. One-two pitch. Damon with a shot. Rip going to lay out and pick it off. Fabulous play. Talked about Giambi, big lead, snagging one down at first. And this is what separates Cal. Seven nothing. You're down by seven. You're not scoring any runs. You come up. Watch him. Watch him get in position to catch it. Dive to your left. Face hit away from. Uh, The crowd responding to the fine defensive effort of Cal Ripken. Here's Ronnie Gant. Gant, the veteran right-handed hitter. And a big rip at John Bale. Now Gant pinch hitting for Jeremy Giambi. It's been a tough go for Ronnie Gant this year. And most of his uh, big league career in the National League. He's with Atlanta. He's with Philadelphia. Well, terrific guy, and uh, you know, was one of those guys that just if, if you couldn't make your pitches, one of the pronounced pull hitters, and if you couldn't make good pitches on the outside corner of the plate, he, he was a home run threat. Big, strong, quick bat. Hit on some outstanding uh, teams with Atlanta. Hitting just 188 uh, as he faces uh, John Bale in limited playing time. Check swing foul ball from Gant. Well, the intention when they went out and got uh, Ron Gant was that because they did, they needed a right-handed bat, and then of course when they get Jermaine Die, he's just not going to get the kind of the bats that 
that he needs at his age to, to have any kind of edge. Gant pitch hitting for Jeremy Giambi. Oakland is a tack down one. Again, they on the infield base hit from Menachino. Also, the throwing error on Brian Robertson. No RBI for Menachino. Bales one two pitch. Got him. And up, sit him down on that inside corner as he throws Ronnie Gant. After five and a half, A's lead the Orioles. Seven nothing. So have that number on your screen. The drawing is September 16th here at Oriole Park. Had uh, Stacy Johnson and uh, the wife of Jerry Hairston, uh, Tanea Hairston, here in the booth with us last night. And uh, make sure you support the, uh, the Orioles' wives in their uh, raffle for the final weekend uh, in New York City to see Cal Ripken wind down his O's career. And Jerry Hairston hitting out of the number two hole in the lineup tonight. Leading things off against Barry Zito. Pitched that shutout effort through the first five innings for the Oakland A's. Well, I mean, two out of his last uh, th three ball games have been nine inning shutouts. So you, you wonder, you mentioned this last night, uh, how, how do you think a lot of innings are going to affect uh, a lot of these young pitchers? Mm -hmm. Talking about Mulder, talking about uh, Hudson, even though Hudson's at, I think, 26. Zito just turned 23. Mulder's 23. So we'll see how far uh, Richard Peterson and Nard Howe uh, will go with Zito. Have to keep an eye on it, not only tonight, but uh, come next month, final month uh -huh. of the baseball season. And, uh, you know, there's 30 games to play, but it certainly is looking like, unless the A's uh, have a monumental collapse, they're going to be in postseason for the second straight year as you take a look at uh, Mark Mulder, Tim Hudson, and Barry Zito in this series. And the Orioles just three runs. Birds now with just five runs scored in his homestand. Harrison with a fly ball, right center field, not deep. Jermaine Dye will put it away. You know, Harrison is out number one here in the sixth. I think the Mar you know, we just showed you, 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 you uh, Tim Hudson, and I guess the, the thing that all the scouts were marveling was the line drive to Larry Bigby hit off his arm last night. Not only did he did it hit him in the arm and right in the right bicep he pounced on it and turned the double play made a perfect throw after taking a I mean a BB yeah. off your pitching arm. Mm -hmm. what we were saying you know uh, it's not as if uh, you know Hudson is the uh, the Roger Clemens type either. I mean you're talking about a guy about one hundred and sixty five pounds. And it has shown uh, a lot of resiliency on the mound. Melvin Moore in conversation with Bill Welke, that home plate umpire. And Welke now. Uh, well, I'll tell you right more. And he's out. Well, I'll tell you what. I, you can't let him. We talked about showing guys up. Welke is out of control tonight. Because he just, I mean, he showed up, Melvin Moore. Melvin, you, we know him. He doesn't say much. Well, you can see Tom Treblehorn sprinting down from the third base coaching box. Sam Palazzo came bouncing up that top step. The uh, the acting manager after Mike Hartgrove had been ejected, and they were both trying to get to between Mora and Wilkie before the inevitable happened. Talking about a pretty mild-mannered guy that just got tossed after the umpire showed him up by pointing at him. That'd be like you taking the bat and drawing a line on the outside corner and saying, you know, why don't you know the strike zone? You think you're you're going to be around? I mean, like Carl Everett has well, done. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at it. Breaking ball outside corner, according to Bill Welke. Yeah, about six inches off the plate. Well, I mean, this is an aim of football discussion right here, and now he's going to point. Saying anything, and Welke was trying to get him back in the box. Short fuse on that man tonight. Well, he's not having a good night. And Larry 
Bigby is going to uh, assume this at bat for the ejected Melvin Mora. Well, Sam Perlazza will go to work. And again, uh, Mike Hargrove's bench coach, Sam Perlazza, the acting manager now. Mike Hargrove ejected by Bill Welke after he made the pitching change with Jason Johnson in inning number five. Well, it has uh, been a night of frustration for the Orioles with Bill Welke. And uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, Welke showing the, uh, the very short fuse in uh, that dealing with Melvin Moore. One and two on Larry Bigby. Bigby a 247 hitter. This is 33rd game as a big leaguer. He's homered a couple of times and driven in six. And Zito's one two. Got a breaking ball that was a beauty to fan Bigby. Uh, second strikeout on the night for Barry Zito. Terrific curveball. Be one of those ones if you could take it up there and actually deliver it by foot, hand it, you hand it to the glove of Ramon Hernandez. <laughs> That's where you'd That'd want to hand it. That'd be the spot, wouldn't it? Well, Mike Bodiker, he was here over the weekend and. That's what he could do. He had that run in 83, 84 when he won 20 games. It just seems like it was just, it was unbelievable. And with his big overhand curveball. Pretty good heater there. Jeff Conine a little bit tardy on it. Well, again, he changes your eye level in and out, change ups away. He's used all his pitches, very much what Mark Mulder ended up doing after the first inning the other night. It wasn't easy for all of these. I mean, Tim Hudson, we talked about last night, has wind up not where he wanted it. So all of a sudden, uh, he makes some changes, wins 20 games. Mulder last year, herniated disc. He comes back, he's won 16. He works his rear end off. He's got about three to four miles per hour more. Zito. Zito's a guy, a guy that last year he was thrown way over the left side of the rubber. As you mentioned, lost five in a row. Rick Peterson got him over now to the third base side and helped his wind up, helped his command. He's about as good as they get right now. Three of two on Jeff Conine, who's uh, hitting with the bases empty and two down here in a seven nothing Oakland lead in the bottom of the six. And the payoff pitch to Conine. And the amazing thing is that you draft all these kids, and within two to three years, they're all in the big leagues, and they're all accomplished pitchers. That'll miss. Uh, Jeff Conan has a two-out walk in the bottom of the six. Cal Rickard to the plate. Cal's been uh, busy down at the hot corner with the glove at third base for the O's this evening. Yeah, good night. Base hit when he gets the bat. Little roller right here. He's going to swoop on it. There's an out. And then with Johnny Damon, and Johnny thinks he's got a single in the left field, trying to do what Tony Gwynn does so well. He's at five and a half hole, and Cal's there to cut it out. So Rip ended the hitless drought. That shot up the middle off Barry Zito. And the second turn at the plate. Speed from Zito had Cal Ripken out in front. And he's putting uh, there's the differential about 12, 13 miles per hour for Zito between the fastball and the changeup. And he comes off the the change with a fastball that drives Ripken back. About 89, maybe 90, a couple of times tonight. The fastball. One-two pitch. In the air to center. Long run, Damon can't get there. Base hit. Second knock of the night for Cal Ripken. Another changeup. And Ripken stayed on it and served it to shallow center. Fifth base hit of the night for the Birds. Cal has two of them. Well, the master of adjustments. Different swing tonight. Leaning back last night. Didn't hit it well off the end of the bat. And Damon playing very shallow. Can't get to it. So curveball up the middle the last time for a base hit change up for another base hit. And maybe Batista can make something happen. Tony's delivered a base hit to right and also flied out. 
Zito will move him off the plate. And the Orioles trying to get on the board. Birds and losing five in a row have been outscored 36 to four. Almost unbelievably in this homestand. 2 0 on Batista. Well, one of the credos for Oakland is in a fastball count, have something else you can throw. So here's Batista, great fastball hitter. 2 0 hitting count. And we'll see what he throws him. Fastball yeah. still didn't get it. Turned the fastball loose. That four seamer up in the zone and Batista right through it. Very good presence on the mound for this youngster. Ah, dealing 2 1 to Batista. That'll miss upstairs. 3 and 1 on Tony. Well, those two out walks sometimes come back to haunt you. Certainly did Jason Johnson back in the first. Back to back walks in the three run home run. Batista laid off and then a load him up. Two out walk to Tony Batista. So after Zito got Harrison Mora, the walk to Conine, base hit from Cal Ripken, and now the walk to Batista has loaded the bases. We'll get Chris Richard to the play. But oh, they got a young right-hander, Luis uh, Viscano. So he's got a lot of firepower out there, middle relief. To hopefully uh, get to Jason Isrenhausen. There's Rick Peterson. So there to go, and there is uh, Luis Viscano. Take a look at the Cal Ripken retirement hat. You can honor the Iron Man with the Ripken hat, this adjustable garment washed hat. The official retirement logo on the side. Cal's name and number on the front. Pick up one tonight, 19 bucks. And you'll receive a free Orioles floppy hat, 1-888-624-BIRD. The number for your Ripken retirement hat. Bases loaded with Orioles. But Peterson's at his safe with Barry Zito. Chris Richard, last time at the plate, said Terrence Long. Up onto the barrier in left field. They take extra bases away from Richard. And the A's turned it into a inning into double play as they double Cal Ripken off first base with a relay throw from Long to Miguel Tejada to Jason Giambi. Pretty big play because that's back in the fourth inning. The score at that time, 3 0. Fly ball center field. Good in the inning. Johnny Damon. Got it. We're going to seventh here at the yard. Orioles leave the bases loaded and trail over seven of them. Michael, I got Jim Palmer with you here at the yard, and uh, Luis Matos will move from left field to play his uh, more normal center field now after the ejection of Melvin Mora. Larry Pigby will assume the uh, the at bat. Uh, for Mora is now in left field. You know, we like to talk about our outstanding production crew here at the yard, and uh, Kevin Santos, one of our fine camera operators. I'll tell you what, the, the whole crew helped Santos celebrate his 30th birthday uh, the other day, and uh, good time had by all, as I'm informed. And uh, maybe that's why maybe that's why the lenses are a little bit shaky yeah. tonight. When does I this, don't know. When does this crew not have a good time? <laughs> they always have a good time. And a very professional in their approach and uh, a happy birthday to Kevin Santos. Uh, one of the, uh, the very fine camera operators uh, here at the yard. Omedo Signs is at the plate. Uh, Signs in the seven nothing Oakland lead pinch hitting for Jason Giambi. That is drilled to left. Bigby racing back and they put it away. A good jump on the baseball from Larry Bigby as uh, gets a chance uh, in left field and the baseball finds him right away. Certainly helps out your pitchers. Good jump. That ball uh, hooked down into the corner. Signs who uh, can do some DHing when uh, Jeremy Giambi's not doing it and assuming that role. So a ball that could have been a doubles and out. Now here's a cleanup hitter, Jermaine Dye. Nice, uh, had a base hit and a walk tonight in a couple of official plate appearances. 
A's have not hit the birds for the third straight night. Eight to five and have the seven nothing lead as we play here in the seventh. As Bale will miss with a breaking ball. A couple back to back uh, curveballs. We'll see now uh, with the count two and oh how he works Jermaine Dye. John coming over over from Toronto in the uh, in a trade where uh, Jason Worth, former first rounder for the Orioles, highly touted about two years ago, and then his value diminished greatly. So John Bale, uh, first time in the big leagues uh, with Toronto back in 1999, and what's he did to do? He gets to face Manny Ramirez, throws a three-run home run as he came up in the month of September. Came up as a starter, at least in the minor leagues, and then eventually became a. Uh, a reliever. How about averaging 13 strikeouts per nine innings like he did a couple of years ago at Double A Knoxville? Pretty good command. He's been impressive in this second tour of duty. Backing down off the plate on that count four to three two. Well, an opportunity to. Um, you would think get a lot of work in September and then possibly uh, pitch winter ball and go into Fort Lauderdale next yeah. year with a chance to uh, cement one of the left handed relief rolls on the club. Kind of missed a Jermaine Dye and he's aboard with a one out walk here in the seventh. Third base number three. Well, well, Ravens about ready to uh, wrap up the preseason tomorrow across the street at PSI Net Stadium. You can turn to BWI Spotlight for the uh, the lowdown from head coach Brian Billick. It'll be the day after every Ravens game as they try to defend their NFL championship throughout the regular season. All the X's and O's from Brian Billick himself. BWI Spotlight weeknight six o'clock right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Eric Chavez. He's had the uh, the big blow that's made the difference tonight. A three run shot in the opening inning. Uh, the starter Jason Johnson. This is going to get the seats up the line and left. A three two pitch. Jim Jason Johnson was missing with the breaking ball. Tried to sneak the fastball by Chavez middle of the plate and he rocked it. Well, you can see Jason just put his head down and again the, the intent was to run that ball away from him and didn't get it there. And, so that we've seen him. We've seen him do it before. And of course, he's young, and I'm going to see him do it again because he's a good hitter. Round ball right back to Bale. A Roberts for one, but the throw pulled him to the the right field side of the bag, and uh, John Bale he made a better throw. Maybe had a chance to uh, double up Eric Chavez. I think the degree of difficulty here watch him have to kind of really stagger to catch this. So I mean right there legs aren't underneath. He's got to turn all the way around about 270 and there's your errant throw. So you get the lead runner. But maybe a chance as you mentioned to, to turn two, but not on that throw. And Ryan Roberts just gets the one out gets off the bag. So that eliminates uh, Jermaine Dye on two down with Chavez aboard and Tejada taking a cold strike. And really the definitive thing you look at with a left hander especially if he's going to be you know, long middle guy is can you get lefties out. Have to. Yep. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, try to get those matchups. Bale turning a fastball loose and Tejada had a pretty healthy hack at it. Well, as we mentioned only the one base hit that was a flare jam shot and uh, Miguel he's one in one of those. Streaks right now where you don't have to throw him a strike to get him out. Still playing well defensively, but we've seen in all three games he will expand the strike zone. So if you're throwing a strike right now, you're doing him a favor. Mm -hmm. Well, especially when it's 0 and 2, but just in general terms. He is seeing the ball and swinging at it. Now Bill's 0 2 pitch. <laughs> piece of the gear of Fernando Luna. Well, he's trying to hit it down to Tampa Bay where they're headed. Just kind of zoom by it on the way down when they get on the plane. And uh, those Seattle Mariners, as I said when we uh, started tonight, you know, Lou Pinella and the guys, uh, they're relaxing here in uh, their downtown Baltimore hotel with 
They're what their 97th win of the year today. That's all they got. That's all. Right. It's all over for them. They don't have 100 yet. Oh, you know what? I gave them one extra. It's only 96. Excuse me. After they, uh, Freddie Garcia, another strong pitching performance to shut out Tampa Bay. So Mariners are here in downtown Baltimore and uh, waiting till tomorrow night. Well, I guess this is all about why are we throwing him fastballs when we're ahead 0-2? Because he's swinging as hard as he can, and he's airing it out, and there are other ways to get Mc Miguel Tejada out, and when the Orioles have done that pretty well in the series. Mark Wiley has uh, had his visit with John Bale and Fernando Lunar. Miguel Tejada, as we said, has the, uh, the mini Iron Man streak going on. Played every game this year, and where he ranks among shortstops. Bale got him on a breaking ball, hitting over to Hata down swinging. But Bale picks up the K. What do you say we stretch it out after six and a half? All Oakland tonight. Uh, one of the Orioles uh, coaches, that's Rudy Arias. Rudy uh, works with the ball club before. He's in that uh, Cal Ripken signature cap back there, the green cap, and then he uh, charts the pitches. Oh, Rudy got them all uh, squared away. Uh, I want to say happy birthday to uh, Rudy's fine young son, Alex. Alex Arias turning 13 today. Had a terrific summer in his uh, travel team. Uh, pitcher swings the bat real well, and uh, Papa Rudy and uh, Mom Hilda very proud of uh, Alex. So Alex, happy birthday to you. And uh, he's playing on those travel teams around Baltimore, Jim, on into the fall, and. Uh, I think the Arias family might have, uh, who knows, another yeah. big leaguer on the horizon. Get his dad to throw BP to That's him. That's right. The signs will come in and play first base. And uh, there's Luis Viscano. He's uh, pitched extremely well. He's down in uh, AAA Sacramento where he went two and two with seven saves. Struck out. Like 56 and 42 innings, and there's his numbers at the major league level, and he's been a very good. It has not allowed a run in 13 of his last 15 outings. And uh, when he comes in with runners on the bases, is stranded the last four. So he's on a roll, as the A's are. They lead this one seven to nothing. And Barry Zito goes to first six. So he's now in his last seven starts. From that ERA, it came in at one run a game. It's going even lower, even though you know, threw a lot of pitches, 94, but didn't yoke any runs, got out of some jams. Well, Fernando Lunar bouncing it foul. Well, Lunar to lead things off in inning number seven for the Birds, who trail it by seven. Luis Matos to follow, and then back to the top of the lineup for Brian Roberts. Both manager Mike Hargrove and uh, Starting center fielder Melvin Mora ejected tonight by home plate umpire Bill Welke. In case you're just joining us, Mike Hargrove for taking up the cause uh, for his starting pitcher Jason Johnson. And I think the Orioles uh, felt that uh, Welke was squeezing Jason Johnson in that strike zone during his sequence to a couple of hitters on the ground right side for Frank Medikino to throw out Fernando Lunar. And it's uh, the kind of numbers the Orioles just do not like to see. But uh, as troublesome as it has been, the net 2000 line of the game, the Orioles have just managed just four runs in 51 and one third innings of swinging the bat this weekend and on into this week. So on the homestand. And unless they uh, put together a, a serious outpouring of runs in uh, the latter half of this, Tahara wheeling behind the bag, it'll make the outstanding play to get Luis Matos. Well, Miguel Tejada has done it all in this series, going to his right into the hole and now range to his left behind the bag and gunning down the speedy Matos. Well, it's amazing when you see on a daily basis, you know, whether it's Portic, whether it's Cheater, whether it's Rodriguez, Tejada tonight. One hop throw to go. I mean, look at the range, look at the balance, off balance. I mean, you don't practice this. Great range, great agility, accurate arm. Nice play by Signs. Two outs. 
And Luis Matos just shaking his head. Thought he had a base hit. Well, Tejada and the entire A's defensive core. So impressive this entire series. Brian Roberts. And Roberts on the night at 0 for 3 out of the leadoff spot. But uh, again, the Orioles with the one run over the weekend against Toronto. They have to go back to 1967. We'll find the last time the Orioles were only putting up a run in three games. Line to right, Jermaine dies. Got it inning over. We go to the eighth, seven nothing, Oakland. Dimension data trivia question time. Nine shortstops have hit 30 home runs in the season. Big league history. Three of them are uh, somehow associated with tonight's game. So we said if you've been paying attention during the course of this series, you should be able to come up with two of them, right? Anyway, that we've talked well, about. Well, Tejada. Oh, yeah. Cal Ripken. Cal Ripken. Now, so Bill Welke. Who's the third? Bill Welke, the home plate umpire? Yeah. <laughs> Where did he get 30 home runs in his uh, little league school? Tony Batista, because he played mostly shortstop in 1999. <laughs> And how about the likes of other shortstops, of course, Rico Petroselli, the Boston Red Sox, and Barry Larkin, and Nomar has done it. Vern Stevens, of course, Ernie Banks four times, and A Rod five times. So Rico Petroselli, I think, was the, uh, been the second one to do it, the third one after Banks and Stevens. And, uh, Rico had that big year with uh, Boston, uh, say 1967 there, uh, somewhere in here. I remember Longborg and Gibson in Game uh -huh. Seven at Fenway Park. I know I donated a few into the screen for Rico. For Rico? Oh, he could yeah. go down and rake. Mm -hmm. Pole hitter in Fenway Park with power served him well. Oh, John Bale back on the mound to start any number eight. Bale facing the uh, the left-handed swinging left fielder Terrence Long. Long's been in the uh, the thick of things tonight. For the Oakland A's, as always, with a fine defensive play and a base hit and score to run. Got right. him to roll over on that bouncing ball to the right of Jeff Conine with Bale covering the bag for round number one. Well, that's what Mike uh, Flanagan was talking on Sunday. They worked with John uh, because he's pretty much over the top, maybe three quarters, almost overhand. Drop down. I mean, great sidearm curveball. And uh, with a guy like Terrence Long, that's what it takes. You got to show him something different, different angle. There's Ramon Hernandez. He's had a base hit and uh, scored one of these seven A's runs on the night. Had a big series here at the yard against the O's. There's uh, Art Howe. I think, Jim, we've mentioned this, though. They look this as, at this as a period with uh, you know, the Orioles struggling. The Orioles are going down to Tampa Bay. Then the Orioles come back to Oakland. A chance for them. And then they've got a lot of help. They've got help from the Cleveland Indians the last uh, three nights. So if they're going to go on and win this game, they have picked up three games in the wild card race on the Boston Red Sox to take their lead from three games up to six. Well, just remember, it's 16 and 23 in their division, 49-27. It's going to probably be 50 and 27 outside of it. It's sharply to the right of Roberts. So back in and make that long throw to get Ramon Hernandez. Well, Brian Roberts taking care of the Ramon Hernandez ground ball. Make sure you get the, the real skinny and everything going on with the Baltimore Ravens after every home game here on Comcast Sportsnet. What you do is turn to Ravens post game live for the, uh, the best interviews and analysis. Ravens coverage all year long on Comcast Sportsnet. Best place to go before, during, and after the game. There was a battler behind the plate. Ray Fossey, who started his big league career with the uh, Cleveland Indians before moving on to the Oakland A's. And Fossey, I uh, always enjoy talking to Ray, one of the, the real good guys around the game, and has uh, been working the Oakland Athletics telecast with uh, Greg Papa for uh, the last few years. Of course, I think the, probably the definitive play in his career really affected it was that uh, 70 All Star game. That was my first All Star game, start of that game. And uh, the collision at the plate, Pete Rose and, and Ray. Uh, cervical problems. We did play on some outstanding ball clubs. 
Now Bills 1-1 one, one pitch will miss downstairs to Frank Manichino. Two and one on the right handed hitting the second baseman. You know I was looking at Manichino and it's almost like you know a lot of ball clubs and we talk so much about the home run power of the hot. His glove even though you mentioned he's got 11 home runs 55 RBI's you know the average is not where he'd like it. He's in there for his defense. Mm -hmm. Roberts trying to handle that short hop not able to do so. And a tough play had to charge. And we'll see how that scored. Brian Roberts. Picked that short hop on this in a, almost like a humpback line drive on one short skip that glanced off the heel of his glove. And we're going to give uh, Roberts his second error of the night. And now the 16th error on the year for Brian Roberts. So, uh, the youngster getting a uh, force fed uh -huh. taste of big league life. And Roberts in his 60th game committing his uh, 16th error of the year. And now that is the most on the Orioles ball club. There's a the leadoff man Johnny Damon. Two down and then a Kino aboard in the eighth. Damon had a sacrifice fly tonight. 0 for 3 officially as they have to work the outside corner. Is uh, right now, Jim, and be the uh, the Oakland A's and another American League Division Series set to with the New York Yankees. Seattle would play Cleveland and uh, the other first rounder. So this could both could be very very interesting. And uh, yet Seattle has really dropped the hammer on the Indians this year. They have won. Uh, Cleveland won two of the uh, the eight the two teams played against one another and one of them was that game where they came back from 12 oh, yeah. nothing down and one on a Sunday night. And, uh, as Oakland has uh, given the Yankees fits as Damon fouls it straight back and out of play. Well, I think they're very aware that uh, and we talk so much about it they need to win now they need to have a comfortable cushion. Um, and the reason for this is that if you go back last year, they played very well. I think they went something like 22 and 7 after going 11 and 18 in August to, to end up get, ending up in the postseason. But Tim Hudson had to win the last game to get into the postseason, so he wasn't available till later on in the series. So in a perfect world, you know Seattle's going to be able to do it. You assume if the Yankees keep playing like they are, they're going to be able to do it. You have your whole rotation in the last 10 days or so where you can set them up. You can get the matchups you want. But the bottom line, when we look at Oakland, if they do end up winning, the wild card thing is the back end of their bullpen, how they pitch. That's right. That will probably be the, the telltale sign. 3 2 pitch, right to left. It's going to drop for a base hit. Then Aquino will come on over to third. Johnny Damon making that big turn as Bigby got the throw back to Jerry Harrison. And that's a two out base hit for Johnny Damon, his first hit of the evening. And the leverage on the corners for Ron again. Hit number nine on the night for the Oakland offense. Ron again came on to pinch hit for the DH Jeremy Giambi in the sixth inning and fanned against John Bale. Yeah, that was only his 18th at bat. Not much playing time to be had. I know we do. How many to set lineup? I mean, Art Howe runs a set lineup out there, and why not? The way they've been going, the way they've been winning. And you can do that. Uh, you know, I think with an older ball club, maybe you'd be a little concerned sometimes. You need to give them some rest, even if you are trying to win the wild card. But with a young ball club, mm -hmm. oh, Gant laid off the breaking ball. Kind of leave it at 1 1. We're in the eighth. Oakland with a 7 0 lead. Not ready to uh, drop the hammer and a three game sweep here at the yard. It's Alan Mills. Now 
loosening up in the O's pen. One one again. Up in front on the breaking ball. Two pitch. All right, to move to his right to corral that breaking pitch. Uh, Ryan, the guy, he got a lot of at bats up in Colorado before uh, coming over to the A's. I mean, he was up 171 times and hit eight home runs. A little bit different though when you're maybe maybe batting once a week, or maybe a couple of at bats. And the two-two from John Bale, three and two. An extended outing for John Bale tonight. Came on and uh, finished off the fifth. So Bale into his third full inning of work. I remember that three and two thirds on Sunday against Toronto, longest he's ever pitched at a major league uh, stint. And if he works the ninth, he's going to uh, surpass that. Three two pitch. That'll miss. It's going to load him up. Damon was moving on that 3 2 pitch. Uh, the walk around again. And that'll get Almedo signs to the plate here in the eighth with the bases loaded. And a visit from Mark Wiley for John Bale. While the conversation from Mark Wiley and uh, John Bale takes place, we'll remind you that uh, you're going to be at the yard on Tuesday, September 11th for all first Cal Ripken travel mug night. All fans of 705 O's Toronto game will receive this uh, very wonderful Ripken items. Get your tickets now, 1 888 Bird to go online at the Orioles.com. John Bale. Is uh, going to go after Olmedo signs. Bases loaded with A's. Signs a pinch hit for Jason Giambi. And lined out to the corner and left. Larry Bigby run it down. His only plate appearance. Yeah, it looks like John Bale is running out of gas. A little right? bit out of gas. Yeah. I'm trying to figure it out. You I mean you get out there sometimes and you don't have that good fastball, you know that I, mean, I would assume John would know that this guy's a pretty good hitter. Better against lefties than righty. That's a called strike. One and one on Olmedo signs. And of course, uh, John Bailey started early on in his career as he came up through the minor leagues and eventually uh, they felt better suited to be a reliever. So the arm, you know, the legs get a little bit tired and he's got to slow everything down and just try to get that arm out in front and somehow locate the strike zone. But trying to go in, I mean, in and out, very tough. And I think John understands. And then Fernando Lunars, you don't want to be messing around in the middle of the plate. So Almeida signs. Too good a hitter. So the base is loaded and no place to put signs. Already 7 0. John Bale working out of the set position. The base is loaded and two down and dealing 2 1 to signs. Breaking ball that missed downstairs. So at 3 and 1. With the bags all loaded up, see if uh, Bale is pretty much forced at this point to go after signs with a fastball. Missed in. And a force in a run. Give the RBI to Olmedo signs. Frank Manichino to the plate. Eight nothing Oakland. And Sam Palazzo, acting manager in. The absence of Mike Hargrove, who was ejected by Bill Welke earlier on, is going to make a pitching change. And 
so we'll tell you about Alan Mills when we come back. All Oakland tonight here in the eighth. of inning number eight and it's eight nothing Oakland lead uh, Allen who Jim has uh, had a season shortened by injury you see appearing in just his 14th game and then uh, trying to figure some things out uh, of late in his stints on the mound well he has he's really been hurt by the three run home run uh, Everett and uh, Gomez FP uh, Santangelo they got him uh, as a utility player he'll play a little bit of uh, his second base so he'll hit instead of uh, Jermaine Dye. But three three run home runs uh, in his last four starts and that's led to about 10 runs. So not trusting his stuff uh, just about a year ago September 15th had his shoulder repaired. So it took a while and you know, out on rehab uh, finally uh, really getting the velocity up 91 92 but a couple miles per hour short and command not where he'd like it. Talking to Allen, to Allen the other day, and saying, you know, "This is uh, I'm used to this. You know, handle some adversity. Not that uh, everybody doesn't go through it, but trying to, as we said, find his way and work some things out in the, uh, the latter stages of this baseball season." Trying to get FP Santangelo, who is hitting for Jermaine Dye in the last few innings. Art Howe has uh, lifted his two, three, and four hitters, the Giambi brothers, Jeremy and Jason, now Jermaine Dye for pinch hitters. 1 1 pitch. Stayed away. 2 and 1 on Santangelo. We go back to Alan Mills' first stint with the Orioles, oh, Jim, and uh, very effective as a setup man out of uh, the bullpen. Uh, 94 95 mile per hour fastball hard slider you can see right here just not been able to locate very frustrating that his arm feels good it's just uh, you know, you're used to being able to make your pitches and you can use that fastball and now you have to you know, at least he feels he has to be a little bit more careful with it and when he gets behind in this situation uh, bases loaded a couple of guys on gets the ball in the middle of the plate they've been able to feast on it. That misses. The second base is loaded walk of the inning will force in a run. And it's not easy. I mean, people boo, and you know, they have every right to do that because they're coming out and they're not happy when they look at the scoreboard. But there's a certain fear involved when uh, you're you're getting a fastball in the middle of the plate and they're crushing it, and that's what happened over the last four games. You get a little bit gun shot. You try to make the perfect pitch, you're not aggressive. To Santangelo, he was able to get out front just as he did to Eric Chavez. And Chavez, a big time power hitter. We've already seen that three run home run back in the first. It's on the outside corner, Serrano Mills quickly ahead of Eric Chavez at 0 and 2. Well, back to that familiar phrase throw enough strikes to get him a swing at balls. The only way you can do that is if you get a hit. And Alan Mills has done that. The 0 2 pitch. Mills trying to get Eric Chavez and get the Orioles in the dugout here in the eighth. Protecting Chavez. Splintered that bat down at the plate. They have to go get a new war club. Jim, we were talking about on Tuesday night that uh, starting with uh, that game that began this series, the Orioles are going to get a steady diet of uh, well, probably two of the three best teams in the American League, Oakland and Seattle, for the mm -hmm. next 12 games. Throw the New York Yankees in there, and uh, the Orioles are still going to see as well six more times this year. 
Chavez with a drive to deep right. Richard on the track with a leap, and that ball is out of here. Grand slam home run for Eric Chavez. Some kind of night. He's driven in eight runs on the evening. 13 nothing Oakland. Well, you go yard twice. A couple guys on back in the first, three on here in the bottom of the eighth, or make it the top of the eighth. Just your uppercut. Allen gets ahead, doesn't make the pitch he'd like to. Chris Richard made a nice job of getting back. Big leap. And just over his glove. So four more A's. Touch home play, 13-0. Chavez is going to come up a little bit short probably of uh, Mr. October Hall of Famer Reggie Jackson who holds the A's team record for runs driven in in a game with 10. He did it uh, against the Boston Red Sox in 1969 the year that uh, Reggie hit the 47 home runs when he had 37 that year if uh, memory serves at the All Star break but be that as it may Chavez with an eight RBI night. Three run home run. Grand slam home run as Miguel Tejada will scorch this base hit center field. Well, the Oakland A's are uh, just continuing to bash the baseball around the yard. Well, they batted around. The Orioles also, the Brian Roberts error. All this started with two out. Yeah, three base on balls. And a huge six on the scoreboard. James, at this point, uh, not a whole lot to offer other than uh, that the Orioles are taking a licking and you've got to come back to uh, deal another day. Terrence Long with a fly ball, shallow left. Larry Bigby. He's got it. Inning open. Oakland puts six on the board. Eric Chavez has driven in eight runs tonight. Grand slam home run here in the eighth. 13 nothing A's. FP Santangelo, who pinch hit in the top of the eighth, will stay in the game and play right field. 13 nothing Oakland. As Jerry Hairston. Look at a pitch that misses. Hairston, the number two hitter tonight. And Mike Hargrove's Orioles lineup leading off the eighth. Hairston doubled in three turns this evening. And the Orioles uh, trying to find a way to get on the board. It's not going to mean a difference in winning and losing tonight, Jim, but the, uh, well, the drought offensively has... Uh, now reach some proportions that, um, as I said, almost unfathomable. Well, it's kind of what they happened through the first 11 games where they hit under 200 mm -hmm. from all the way to uh, April 15th. And again, if you go back and remember the hamstring problem with David Segui, Cal Ripken only 25 at bats. So that's not the case now. Cal with only 25 at bats in spring training because of the rib problem. So not playing at uh, full strength and but then again tonight 13 runs it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference even though you know, the game maybe would change a little bit if you're more in it. Luis Viscaino on the mound here in the bottom of the eighth getting work for Art Howe. 2-2 Two -two. popped him up. Miguel Tejada, a couple of strides on the outfield grass to put it away. And it really doesn't get a whole lot better. Aaron Seeley, 13 well, and 4. He's going to pitch here tomorrow night when Seattle comes in. And then Paul Abbott, another 13 game winner. He's 13 and 3. And then uh, Joel Panero, who, I'll tell you what, I mean, I saw him struggle the other night, but this kid can pitch. And he's like 22. And what did he go, like 46 batters until the right handed batter got a base hit off him? Yeah. Not a run, a base hit. That's right. Baby with a ground ball to the right of Tejada. Going to test him again. I'll make that strong throw to get Bigby. 
Jimmy's put on a clinic of how to play shortstop in this series. There's no other way to say it but that. Yep. One really hitting well till tonight. Couple of hits tonight. It looks like it's an off balance throw, but it's right on the money. Uh, you know, he might have been able to set himself. We've seen him do it. We, he did it last night. Then he went in the hole, did set himself. He's done that a couple of times. He's ranged far to his left. He's gone to his right. Maybe let's see how he can feel the high chopper. <laughs> it has been most impressive to watch um, that young man. Uh, well, he's only 25. Yeah. yeah. Well, signed a four year deal last year. Let's see, they got Chavez wrapped up for four years. They're doing a little John Hart out here, Billy Bean, saying, let's get some of our younger players. Four years for Tejada, four years for Tim Hudson. The future potentially extremely bright uh, in Oak Town is. Well, that could change, though. They have a lot of good young players, but. Uh, you know, they're centerpieces. At least they're, they're centerpiece. Yeah, yeah. Jason Giambi. Obviously, you like to retain him. Three and one on Jeff Conine. Uh, Jeff without a base hit tonight. Over two plus a walk. Thought Art Howe made a lot of sense the other night, where he said he was trying to tell the ownership that because the, the sticking point was the guaranteed contract is a sign for six years because he's the type of player if you're not playing well. And, He's got too much pride to hang around just for money. It's not about money. Obviously, it's about money in one sense because you get a lot of money, but it's about the money and it's more about playing in Oakland. And he loves the, he loves Oakland. He loves the, the camaraderie. He loves the, the clubhouse. So sign him, and you know, you, then you appeal to him, even though you do give him some control down the road. If uh, you know you're not winning, probably will go somewhere else. Now here's Cal Ripken to face Viscaino with a fastball by Cal. Jim, my response to that is uh, if ownership in Oakland is serious about wanting to, uh, whether you're a small market or not, wanting to uh, stay where they are right now, and it looks like they're going to the postseason for a couple of years, Jason Giambi is a guy that uh, mm -hmm. plays and approaches the game the right way. And if you're serious about it, you're going to sign him, period. And if not, that tells me that. And maybe that uh, that's not the uh, the prime motivation out in Oakland is winning. Well, I think I'm sure it's about money. That's why they're talking about trying to move to Santa Clara, get a new ballpark, et cetera, et cetera. So they do not have the deep pockets that other teams have. Uh, understood. Yeah. But, you, well, you know that. Yeah. O2 to Cal Ripken. Got a piece of it. And out of the glove of uh, Ramon Hernandez. So Cal will stay alive at the plate. Hey, uh, Luis Vizcaino uh, thrown about 95 from not a very comfortable arm angle if you're right handed. Movement, location, deception. Can you repeat your your wind up and velocity? And he can do that. Struck him out swinging. Uh, got Cal on that slider. The inning over, ninth inning coming up. Oakland with a big lead. Jason Johnson. Chavez goes into the ravine. 21st home run of the season. Three run homers. That's Eric Forte. The A's are on top 3 0. In the eighth, it's 9 0, and the bases are loaded. And here's Chavez again. Is that Eric Chavez's first career grand slam? It is, isn't it? A's go on to win 15 0. Chavez drove in eight, just too short of the A's team record held by Reggie. The A's won five in a row. They're up by six on the Red Sox in the wild card chase.